There we go. Volume minus 17. Perfect. Okay. Ugh. You know, I really do need to get that like intro screen, but I want to get that, that song for it. Um, because it'd be really nice to give people a few minutes to get here before I start talking. Now I'm left in the awkward spot, which I'm sure a lot of people who have streamed are very familiar with. Where I can either sit here for five minutes and wait, or I can start talking and risk having to repeat myself in a few minutes. It's a real double-edged sword, huh? Well, it's not a double-edged sword. It's actually... There's definitely a different term for that. It's, it's a lose-lose. <laughs> also, I missed a bracket here. Japanese quote. So... Don't mind me just drinking some water to kill time. So, real quick first off, um, I'll explain why I've been absent for a bit. Hey Bird, nice to know someone's here. I'm not talking to the Void, that's good to know. So I've been absent for a couple weeks. Um, essentially, what happened, and I say happened, don't get your hopes up, it's not really anything too big. Um, I ran out of one of the medications I take a few weeks ago, and you know, I was thinking, okay, well, I want to try not being on this stuff. It was an antidepressant. So it's like, you know, I'm not sure how much this is actually doing because I've only started taking this kind of medication, um, you know, now in my 30s. And it, it the effects can be pretty subtle, honestly. Um, but I went off of it and immediately the next day and for like the next week or two, dead tired. I was like taking naps in the middle of the day. I was sleeping for 12 to 14 hours. So, I'm back on it, and I think I'm going to stay on it for the foreseeable future. So yeah, things are better now. I've been on it again for just a couple days. I've already pretty much readjusted to being on it. And, you know, it really helps. It helps me not only get stuff done, but... I'm missing another quote right here, oops. Um, when I'm not getting stuff done, being on this somehow magically tells me it's okay you'll get it done later you don't need to feel bad you can take a break for a bit it really just helps with the mentality it helps me be a bit easier on myself and it also helps me push myself to get more done medication's magic you know definitely should have gotten into this you know another 10 years ago instead of being hesitant you know a lot of people are hesitant to take medication They're like oh it's gonna change who i am and it's a very rational fear but you know I, I saw someone say online, I think a few years back, it really just helps you be who you are. Because the, these issues like low energy or depression or anxiety or whatever can really prevent you from being who you want to be. So you need to think about it in a better way. Hey Cross Alter. And hey Chuckles. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking about that. So, I want to show off what I've been doing for the past few weeks. Uh, I know some people have seen this stuff on Twitter too. I want to code some Don Maku tonight. Um, first of all, I just want to kind of recap what I've been doing recently. So let me turn off this music. Let's get this open. I'm just going to show off the patterns that I do have that are finished. So I'll do a quick overview of the menu here once this gets captured. It takes OBS a few seconds. So I haven't really added anything new to the menu in particular. I haven't really gotten to it. Sometime I'm going to sit down with Ferdy and do some more of these awesome icons. I love these. Got them in Japanese too. Cool, right? Uh, I have a lot of fixes I need to do because this menu is kind of a mess right now. There's like different modes that you can see over here, but like these displays don't update very well. Like you can switch it between these, but these just just trust me, it's it's very confusing and only I know how to navigate this right now. But anyway, let me disable turbo mode, please. Oh god, no. So this is the first room Mia card I made before. This is actually one I haven't posted on Twitter. It's not super flashy. I'll just show off like normal and to take a couple these real quick. Also, okay, see, you become invincible. Check it. Just a nice little debug tool. And it's supposed to draw hitboxes for bullets if you hit V, but it's not working and I'm not sure why. <laughs> I swear this was working like two or three days ago, so I must have broke something and I don't know how because I don't really touch like the graphics file very often. It handles all the drawing functions, so ugh. I'll look into it sometime. So yeah, pretty simple. I've talked about it before, but my basic philosophy with this game is 
kind of make the patterns somewhat like Zen would, like base them generally off of pre-existing Danmaku and follow naming conventions wherever possible, that kind of thing. But lean into gimmicks a little bit more. Kind of like add in my own spin or interpretation of the character. Are the shadow waves counted as bullets? Uh, you can't run into them and they shouldn't count toward the bullet counter either. They might though, because the thing is with those, to show this real quick here. The thing is with special objects like the shadow waves is those are coded very deliberately. So if I just bring up Rumia's code right here, it's down here. Okay, so it's not based off special. No, that shouldn't count as an object toward the counter. It's literally just one thing that draws a single circle with so many like points on it that it looks smooth. But some things, um, like something you'll see in the next pattern, just a minute, might internally count as bullets? I'm not actually sure offhand. I don't think so. They're based off something called the special object type, which I can use for stuff that can kill you, stuff that can't kill you. It's essentially, if I have something really specific I want to do that I'd rather not code like in bullet down the basic bullet object with, I'll do this and kind of like script it manually. Uh, the bullet count should be accurate. Let me see here. So let's try it in lunatic. Let's see. 96 224. Yeah, it's going up there. Uh, yeah, it seems to be going up and down. So the bullets, um, essentially how it works is if you look through the entire bullet table every frame to see if there's bullets outside of the play area, that can bog things down. So I think once every second or twice every second, I can't recall, it checks for bullets outside of the screen a certain distance and clears them. And when it does that, it shouldn't lower this count by one. It should be functioning to my knowledge. If it's broken, I wasn't aware. <laughs> so yeah, Trail at Night is a very simple kind of like intro card sort of thing. Blind Predator took me like weeks to make, I think, or at least a week. I kept messing with this card over and over again until I got it right. I've shown off an old version of it before. And I don't have the old version anymore. I deleted it just to clean things up. But it's a little bit different now. So essentially what this used to be is Rumi used to just randomly wander the screen and touching the leaves would make her jump towards you and do stuff. Um, she just fire out like big waves of bullets, more or less. Uh, but now she spins in a circle. And, well, yeah, if you don't touch a leaf for a while, the game is like, hey, idiot, the leaves don't kill you. Here you go. You have to touch one. And now she has like a little Moonlight Ray sort of spin off here, too. Then she resumes spinning in the other direction, and you repeat. Pretty straightforward. This is just on normal mode, so it's not too bad. Those gray bullets are there kind of just to like make dodging difficult for a little bit longer there. So on Lunatic it's a little bit trickier. And typically what I do, and I'll show this off in a second on the other card too. Typically for hard on Lunatic, or sometimes just Lunatic, I want to add something new to the card. Uh, so on Lunatic, god that is really difficult. Uh, it changes up the stuff that her trail makes. And she makes uh, like little bullets instead, but a lot more of them, as you can see here. But they're in such a way where you can see where they're going to go before they actually start moving. It's harder to dodge that than it might look. Um, you'll see an endless mode in a minute that it gets like absolutely unreasonable really quickly. Oh shit. Uh, on Lunatic, you really, really want to make sure she hits the very top of the screen. Otherwise, that happens. <laughs> Let me, let me try to do this a little bit better. I think I've hit a good balance between like fair and also putting some responsibility on the player to make sure they redirect her properly here. I think on Lunatic, it's fair to say like if, if you redirect something the wrong way, you can get walled off. That That's fine. Be it like streaming bullets or in this case streaming the boss. I don't really feel bad about that. On lower difficulties, as long as, you know, you don't let Rumi like, totally slam you against the wall and trap you, you're probably fine. But on Hardened Lunatic, it's a little bit stricter, obviously. 
Yeah, I would dare say like Unlunatic, the main threat is definitely the Twisty Bullets. That's probably the case for normal too, but the thing is, on lower difficulties, I have a hard time gauging if they're good or not for that skill level. Um, I'm not like an LNN master or anything. I'm not like a pro Toho player. I've never done an LNN of any sort. I even really tried. But I have clear Lunatic quite a bit and I've been playing since Mount of Faith, so... It can be a bit difficult, especially with You're the Developer Syndrome. Gauge if your game is the right difficulty or not. Now, I, I can tell if something is hard usually, but I can't tell if something is easy enough. That's kind of how it works, you know. That's not just a Toho-centric thing. That happens for, like, pretty much every game dev. Okay, that was not a good redirect. Uh, shit. Any leaves? Please. Right now, honestly, this card might be a little bit too hard. Eventually, I'd like to get some testers to, like, get... I looked over at chat. Okay, well, you, you get the idea. You didn't miss anything. But yeah. So that one changes to have pellets on hard and lunatic. And this one is the same on hard, just a little bit more difficult. I changed the way that the bullets overlap in all the difficulties here. Um, and Lunatic, as you might have noticed earlier, adds in a fourth color with the yellow bullets. Which, rather than overlapping with the other bullets, they kind of give you something to do between waves. Honestly, I would say the amount of times you get killed by the yellow bullets is probably really, really low. Typically, how this card will get you is trying to pass through the triple layer there. I would say this card might even be too easy for Lunatic. But at the same time, it might kill you the first few times until you kind of learn how the bullets overlap. Anyway, um, I'll show off what Turbo and Endless modes are in a minute. Turbo kind of sucks though. But, um, so I'm going in the order that I made the cards in. So this is Patchley's first card. This didn't take too long to make. I went through a couple iterations, but the general concept I had from the very beginning. Like a big sunburst kind of thing. And personally, I feel like Patchouli's fire bullets are really underutilized. I want to say Zim only used them in EOSD. I can't remember offhand. Maybe they'll shoot the bullet or something somewhere. But they essentially got abandoned really early into Toho's development. He made them, didn't use them. Now, remaking those, now all, all these bullets are handmade by the way like made with different photoshop filters and stuff remaking those to look kind of like zones but without just stealing zones was tough to say the least but i think i did pretty well in the end i i really like how they look there it's a little bit different i guess maybe the outlines are a bit different but i'm happy with it so yeah this pattern uh, what, what is it that this does differently oh right so that that Kind of like circle wave consisting of multiple bullet types that gets fired once on easy and normal and then hard and lunatic gets fired three times so you can listen tick tick boom it does that instead you've got a lot more to dodge and obviously the orange like spiral of bullets is a lot denser in the end though this ends up still being a relatively simple card i say as i lose to my own card <laughs> Look, it's uh, it's 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 performance pressure. That's that's what it is, right? Oh, and just for variety's sake, she goes right first on the higher difficulties instead of left. I swear, I usually have a better capture rate on this. Carrington event is usually not that bad. And in a minute, I'll show off my like, I guess you could call them design docs, maybe, for the characters as well. Uh, I essentially do like some light research into kind of the general trends that the characters have beforehand. Like I have footage of most of their patterns captured, for example. So let me just bring up Patchley here real quick. Let me hide the game. So I have all these up in advance. Patchy here. Uh, this is a list of all of her cards, barring like oh, some of them have like high level variants. Woo! And it probably doesn't need to have the fighting game cards, but I threw them in here too. I don't have footage of them though. So we've got like her general pattern trends here. She's got the rotating blue lasers for the two non-spells she has. A lot of her attacks from my observations tend to fill the screen. Not all of them. But stuff like Royal Flare, Silent Selene, they're very much like she's firing bullets 
everywhere. There's like a big array of magic around her. She uses basically any bolt in the book. I think she's even used knives and philosopher's stone, maybe? I don't recall. But pretty much anything's on the table, though, honestly. And she even has her, like, her own unique ones. She, she moves sometimes. Sometimes she doesn't move. It varies. So she's got a lot of variety to work with here. And anyone who knows Japanese will immediately notice every single card name, barring the part where it says like sign or whatever, is katakana. So all this is English. So when this says Green Storm, this actually says Green Storm. When this says Barian Lake, that's not because the translator is a non-native English speaker. That's because this says Barry in Lake. Lake. Very in Lake. Very good. So, I kept the same theming here, and you can see, even without any knowledge of Japanese, you can tell, hey, that those, those characters look kind of similar to each other. They're katakana. So this is literally Carrington Event, and this is Flash of Apparition. I'm trying to stick with those trends here. Rumia, similarly. Notice how much shorter Rumia's card list. God, despite being such a popular character, Zun gives her no screen time. Yeah, she, she's also a katakana enjoyer. Big surprise there. The simple or childish characters like these tend to, you know, use that. Patchouli, that's just because she's, I guess, a Westaboo? She's the one who does, like, the Western magic, right? Wait, no, that's... that's I always forget which is which. The magic systems don't mean much unless you're, like, looking to the details. But anyway, she's got a bit of everything in here. There's a couple more trends I wrote down down here. Um, some characters have, like, distinct stuff between their cards. She doesn't mind using the same words. We have Logistic again. Uh, we have Trilithon twice, even though it's such a distinct thing. We have uh, multiple Emerald things. And again, some of that might just be because some of these are Tassifro. But uh, both of these are from EOSD right here. There are just higher difficulty versions, but nonetheless. I take everything I can get for name inspiration, and I use it. And the wiki said, in fact, the only combo of the base Fire, water, wood, metal, earth she hasn't used is wooden earth, so I really want to do a wooden earth one. Google is oozing Chinese elements. Yeah, yeah. So, like, these five um, are the Chinese elements, and then she just kind of throws sun and moon on top of that. I'm... Never seen Emerald Megalopolis. Yep, it's, it's a fighting game one, yeah. Uh, so the separation here is... Everything here is EOSD. Uh, so stuff here is stage 4. This is Esther mid boss. Uh, this is fighting game. That's imperishable and missing... Sorry. Immaterial and missing power. Uh, as is this one, I believe. Then these three are shoot the bullets, I want to say. This one might be... I, I think it's just these three. Also... Some of these are written with or without and signs. I just picked some to all have and signs because I like it more. I'm going to be consistent. Then these are from Scarlet Weather Rhapsody onwards, the other fighting games. I don't know how half of these look myself, but I figure like maybe some of the boss cards that they use in the story mode might be nice inspiration. Even Zun's gone and remade some of those, like Yukari's like butterfly thing in Toho 11 that Satori uses. That's directly based off one of her fighting game cards, which is really cool. I'd like to maybe do that kind of thing too, later on down the line, and kind of like adapt them a little bit. But it just so happened that I had inspiration for Patchy as is, so I didn't really have to do that yet. So essentially what I'm trying to do right now, maybe with some exceptions here and there, is go down the list starting from 6, maybe going to 12 or so, take two characters from each game and do two cards for each of them, and move on to the next game. So I've already done EOSD, I'll show off the other Patchy card in just a moment here. Here's just some more fun patchy facts. Um, if you assume that the books in the SDM that attack you in the stage are like programmed by patchy, they're like something that she set up, you could have her use books in a pattern. That's something I don't think I've seen at Sport. Uh, she has the actual magic stones in the Possible Stone Attack Netstra. And it just so happens I actually have like, it's not like proper Philosopher's Stone size, but I do have like a small like, crystal bullet I've made that I haven't actually used yet. So I've got, like, a desire to do this eventually, too. Do something kind of like that. I think something like this might be neat. Something where she, like, switches between the elements and, like, fills in between the gaps with her, like, laser spin attack. 
And if I run out, I can have her do like some like non-elemental thing. I don't know. I've already done the patchy cards anyway, for now. Let me show off the other patchy card real quick as well. This one I actually made two days ago, I think. Much, much faster than the other ones too. You can tell that I made this after I got the antidepressants because I just cranked this out and I was really happy with it. So essentially the gist here is that those bullets fire and they can either leave the full bullets, they can evaporate once, twice, or three times. And the RNG here is kind of weighted, so you won't have like a bunch of empty spaces or a bunch of full spaces in a row. It tries to like balance it out a little bit. It's not perfect, but let me just show off how that works real quick in the code. Just, just a little bit. I'm not going to explain it in depth because it's a little bit messy and it's just something I kept on pushing the numbers of around until it felt right. So essentially, here's the function for this. Um, it starts off with odds negative 20. You might be like, what the hell does that mean? Well, um, for each evaporation check, it rolls a number, 0 through whatever the second number is. And if that is under the current fade odds, then it passes the check and that evaporation stage happens. So if it passes the first check, everything goes away step by step eventually. And then it lowers the odds for the next check. If it fails the check and the bullets stay, the odds of the next check um, passing and something evaporating go up. So it kind of pushes back and forth like a scale to remain somewhat consistent with what you get. Otherwise, you could see something really silly like, oh, the one in a billion odds of like the entire ring disappearing or something stupid and outlandish. Uh, as it is now, that's not possible. It's literally not possible because eventually the odds will go past what the dice can roll here and you have a 100% chance to have it roll and pass the check. So. I actually like how this is in Lunatic. It's, it's pretty fun. I wanted to make a card with a few less elements in it. So this really only has three things. And unfortunately, that does mean that I didn't really add something in the Lunatic variant because I kind of wanted to maintain the card's quote-unquote purity. But the waves come a lot faster, they're more dense, and each difficulty also shrinks the gap between the red and blue bullets. You might notice that like the layering is kind of weird on some of those. I think that's because the table for the bullets is getting reordered internally. That's something I have to like look into fixing later. It's not super high priority right now. I spent like weeks, probably over a month even, like doing a lot of backend stuff on this project. Like making it load files correctly. Boring stuff like that. So really right now I just want to make some damn patterns. <laughs> I'm sick of like maintaining stuff and all that, you know? It's only fun for so long. So this is a good chance to show off Endless Mode, which was initially called Survival Mode, but Endless makes a lot more sense, I think. Because else, uh, how would you differentiate it from Survival Cards? So. So here's the actual records that I have for Survival Mode. I haven't really... I, I think I maybe... I must have deleted the Carrington Event one because that, would sh that should be much longer than that. So what Survival Mode does is every 10 seconds you'll hear a whoosh sound effect um, and that means that the card just got 1.2 times harder. What that means, and I'm just going to show off in code again here real quick since it's probably a good thing to show off. So let's look at Flash Evaporation, the card that I just did. So we have here on everything that spawns bullets, like all these attack functions, we have this adjusted quantity. So what this does is it takes the number that would usually be there. So this is for the, the flames. By default, you have blue flame amount equals 8, red flame amount equals 8. It's even. So you'll see at any given moment, 8 lines of blue flames and 8 lines of red flames coming off of Patchouli. So what this does is it multiplies it by the difficulty modifier. Starts off at 1, of course. So for the first 10, 10 seconds of Lunatic Endless, it'll feel just like normal Lunatic. Then a bit later, it'll multiply that by 1.2 whenever it runs this. It's inserted here as well, so it'll like rotate properly and all that. And it gets harder and harder. 
So both the red and blue lines have that on them here. And in addition, so does the ring of evaporating bullets. So that also gets denser. Let me show off how that works. And one more thing to know is flash evaporation is special. I actually added a new feature for this card that is usable anywhere now. There's a variable called endless mode pause. But what this is, is for macro based cards, if you were to suddenly increase the difficulty, walls of bullets might jump around in such a way that you can't possibly dodge them. So what I do is when endless mode increases the difficulty, the boss pauses for whatever this is. So this is 30 frames, half a second. It's kind of like a little grace period for you to adjust to what's going on on screen and make sure that the card can't become literally unbeatable too soon. Um, due to the nature of this scaling up indefinitely, cards do become unbeatable. Um, how quickly really depends on the card. Obviously this one Eh, somewhat quickly because it's got walls in it, but I'll show off what this is like. I'm actually going to turn on... Well, I'll do a normal attempt, then I'll turn on invincibility just to show off what it's like. So right now, you can see up there it says Nested Lunatic 1.00. Now it's 1.20. So things are a little bit harder. It might be subtle at first, honestly. It might be, unless you're like really closely watching. But over time, you'll notice it's becoming a little bit more dense. You can probably see it most clearly in this card as the player by watching the purple um, rings. So I'm going to turn on invincibility now and let's write this out for a little bit. Now I don't know how it's going to be while I'm streaming and obviously straining my PC a bit more, but I actually used this card as a stress test the other day to check and see how uh, robust my engine was. I had made a couple um, efficiency tweaks that day. So I kind of wanted to see like, okay, how many bullets can I have on screen before I start dropping frames? And I got, I think up to like 7k before it started consistently dropping frames. Past that, there were the occasional spikes. So you can see the bullet count again should be accurate theoretically. As it goes up when one's created, goes down when it dies. So that's pretty good, right? Like, I don't know how many bullets usually show up in Toho patterns. Okay, we went down to like 58 for a second there. So let's see. Now, I'm just going to pretend like I'm dodging this right now. I'm invincible. But you can see it's... If you, okay, there. There, I think I don't think you could have dodged it no matter what. You're right, you can't see the game. I'm forgetful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's what you're missing. Uh, an absolute undodgeable wall. Cards will eventually reach the point where you cannot dodge them no matter what. And yeah, you can see... This number of bullets is still working pretty well. Um, I'm still getting like 55, 58. Okay, now it's dipping. Apparently, whatever it's doing. Now now, now it doesn't like it. But it, it was good. It was very good for a while there. I'm pretty happy right now with how the engine is. Uh, so let's see. I'll show off Carrington event too. I'm just going to turn on invincibility. This is endless. I'm just turning on the invincibility just to show off what this can become. That's all really. So this one doesn't have a pause between um, power-ups, but it doesn't really do too much to it. However, um, it can make for weird bullet configurations in the spirals if Patchley happens to power up like in the middle of making one. You might see like the bullets kind of jump around in a weird way. I'm just going to try to watch this here. It hasn't really happened yet. So yeah, how this interacts really depends on the card. I try not to really make the card with it in mind, but I might adjust things a little bit here and there after the card's done and I've added it in. But yeah, this is, is definitely still dodgeable, but it's probably not very fun. <laughs> like that, that part right there, like when you have to dodge that burst to fire at the end, while also dealing with the tail end of the orange bullets, is hard. A little bit too hard. Um, my actual best on flash evaporation was 31 seconds. I don't have my best for this anymore. I must have deleted it. Oh, I know what it is. Um, when I make the cards, I don't know what they're going to be named yet. So this was named like Laser Test, I think, internally. So if I were to rename it, I think you'd see my best time. Uh, it's just due to how the save files are. So those are the ESD cards. And I also have a Chen card. I did this up just last night. 
So this is Mekon Hencon, which means Mekon Transformation. Uh, it's not just random stuff. Oh, uh, let me actually go over to my Chen document here. So I'll go into this in a moment, but right here, if you don't know Japanese, you're probably looking at this like thinking, wow, that looks really hard to read. That's a lot of complex looking characters. Well, you, you would kind of be right for some parts at least. Um, Chen's cards almost all have four characters in their second part, which I call the subtitle. ASAP. Yeah, so, sometimes I stream. I have my, my antidepressants again. I feel like a hero. So, a lot of these sound like kind of traditional Japanese. Uh, for example, uh, Seimon Doman is like an actual like phrase, I believe, that wards off bad stuff or something. I talked about this in my PC Lunatic video, but that was like a year ago, so I don't remember anything. The Feng Huan, I think it's said. Feng Huan, because Feng Shei is the same thing. Feng Huan, I think, is essentially just the Chinese Phoenix. But yeah, you can see there isn't really like a consistent theming. Like here we have Chinese Phoenix. Uh, we have some like warding off bad luck or something like that. Uh, this is also related to this uh, exorcist guy who used Shikigami called Abe no Seime, potentially. People like to connect them. Uh, this is... I, I think that's a Chinese mount or something. Hiraten something or other. Some kind of god or something. Goatendo is like a guardian deity of some sort. Shikai, this is like... I want to say it's the same thing that the, the Ten Desires crew went through to like get immortality. It's like the hermit thing. They like died and came back and now they're immortal. There, there's all sorts of other stuff in here. Um, it's, 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 it's essentially just different Japanese mythology, history, and like superstitious stuff. So you can see down here, I kind of sum it up. Superstitions, divination, flight, and the Fenghuang. Crests, because uh, this is also like a crest. The... Uh, one and one of these, frankly, I forget which. Uh, I think it's this one is the crest because this actually means large crest right here. So that's why she has like the, the pentagram there. One of these, th this actually used to be called like um, something something large pentagram crest. And the whole time I was thinking of a card for Chen, I was thinking like, hey, I'll do up a pentagram. I'll have her like do a big one on the screen or something like that, that like you get trapped inside of. And maybe I will eventually do that. But I was like, you know, I really feel like I've seen Chen use a pentagram before. So I like look on the wiki and like I can't find anything that says pentagram. So I like search up the Japanese word for pentagram, which is gobose. And like no results, no results for Chen. So I'm just really confused. So I just Google like Chen pentagram. And some other pages in the wiki come up for like fan games. And it appears that this used to just be translated as like large pentagram crest or something like that, I think. So that that's why I had that. It wasn't just a Mandela effect there. <clears throat> so I decided to look into something else. Uh, I also list off these signs that characters use over here. They have like a Senfu, Shikifu, Tenfu, that kind of thing. Then this is just Yin Yang, which is Inyo. So that doesn't really count. That's just like its own prefix over here. <clears throat> so, what I eventually settled on is I was on the page for Abe no Seime because he's got like that strong Shikigami theme. And there was a story about him having like a little battle of divination with another exorcist Shikigami guy. And essentially, the, the bad guy of the story put 15 oranges into a box, 15 Mekon. Mekon is a kind of orange. And went up to the guy and he was like, hey, let's have a bet. Let's bet what's in this box. And apparently Abe no Seime was such a badass that he knew what was in the box and he transformed it from 15 oranges into 15 mice. And he won the bet because he guessed 15 mice. So I decided I would go with that, oops, typo, as the theming. So originally, <clears throat> I was going to go with something like, well, before I did anything, I did in like the late, the, the bullet balance thing. Uh, I'll actually show off the card. Maybe I should do that first, huh? Actually get the window up so you don't miss it. So I'll show off what the card is now. 
And maybe you'll kind of get what's going on here. I, I ditched the number 15 because how the hell am I gonna manage that across tipping di difficulties, but... Oh, I'm on endless. Oops, I didn't realize that. Not bad. This is gonna get real messy real quick, isn't it? Oh god. The last thing I did before streaming today was upload a clip of Endless Lunatic of this, and I don't know how I made it as far as I did. I think I made it 39 seconds, which was miraculous because this card gets stupid hard. Like any card does on Endless after a bit, honestly. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the original thing I did was I added the bouncing uh, Mekon bullets, the oranges. I was going to have like a little box of lasers that they pass through and turn into mice. But it looked really stupid, and from memory, I don't think Chen has ever used lasers in any of her patterns. So I wanted to kind of not stray too far from what Zen would do. She does have a wide variety of bullets she uses. Definitely, like, her most common theme is red and blue bullets and arrowhead bullets. That seems to be the most common, I would say. She's got a lot of pellets too, like the little white ones with just a little tinge of color. And a single time she used butterflies. And also, I didn't note it down, but she uses amulet bullets in shoot the bullet once too. But her shoot the bullet patterns are lame as all hell. They are the worst patterns. Like, for inspiration. I'll actually show them off real quick. Hold on. Hold on a second here. Um, let's close the game so you can maybe hear. I have a big folder full of Domnaka references. Just make it so VLC actually shows up. I don't know if this will work properly. I wasn't really prepping on, I wasn't planning on doing this. Yep, here it is. Okay, watch this, watch this. Let's turn it down a little bit. I turned on invincibility for these because I could not be bothered. Uh, I think I played normally for this one, actually. Like, look, it's it's just this. It's, it's fine. It plays fine and all that. It's streaming, but it looks boring. Kind of, you know? I, I guess to be fair, maybe this one isn't the best example. This one... I mean, it's, it's kind of like bland color-wise, but I guess it's kind of cool how they like kind of go back in over themselves. Anyway, though. Anyway. Check out this boring-ass card. Watch this. I actually wait for a bit here at the start because I'm like, uh, Chen, you, you sure you don't want to do anything else? I haven't played Shoot the Bullet in a long time, mind you. But no, it's, it's just this for now. She adds in something in a second after you do a few more pictures. But this is kind of bland right and like not only about that but th this is day six of shoot the bullet i feel like it should be doing some flashier stuff at this point personally like woohoo she adds in horizontal bullets i want to do stuff a little bit more interesting for my game i want to lean into like the character traits and their powers and stuff a bit more than that there are other ones in the shoot the bullet she's got this one as well which is probably her most, like, distinct and interesting one here. Even though it only has a couple bullet types. It's kind of a pain in the ass that you have to, like, predict when she's going to come out and, like, get her really quickly. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. It's probably the the coolest one to actually play. And here's Baki Neko Chen, which is very similar to Shikigami Chen. Which I count as also Chen's card, even though it's technically Ron's. I complained about this in my recent extra video, but, like, these cards... Uh, should be counted as, like, two-person cards. Fight me. Fight me in POFV. But yeah, I didn't feel like learning how to stream or, like, round again. I just wanted footage, honestly. So yeah. Not the most interesting inspiration there. So I mostly go off of her PCV stuff, where there's a lot more variety in what she actually does. So, let me see here. Uh, let me just get the game back up real quick. I'm lost in my own files here. Not in the sauce, just in files, you know. Happens now and again. I'll just quickly show off the lunatic version of Men of uh, Mekon Hancon. Which is actually still kind of tough to capture, honestly. I didn't make this very easy. If there's a couple ways you can dodge it. If you want to end it as quickly as possible, you do this. You just go straight up and down. Now I did make it so Chen like balls you around the screen somewhat. She doesn't go for your exact position, but if you're to her right, she'll move right, and vice versa. So she doesn't just go hide in the corner and stall at the card on you. I specifically added that movement to the game just because I realized this would suck otherwise. 
I should probably retroactively put it on that one Rumia card, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. But yeah, this card's change on Hardened Lunatic is that when the bullets transform yellow, from yellow to red, uh, watch here, they make two red bullets that like split off in two different directions like this distinctively. So it means uh, it's, it's just different for like where the pellets are going to be. How did I dodge that? Yeah, normally it's just one. But yeah, every, I think, two or three seconds, the general just has all the bullets go back towards you. However, each incrementing bullet color has more of a random spread to where it can go. So I think on Lunatic, it's six degrees or eight degrees, maybe seven, by default, for the first um, tier of bullets, so the black ones. Then past that, it doubles, triples, quadruples, so on. And the red ones are a bit different. They have like a fixed angle that they take away from you. But it applies for the other ones. And they're all a bit faster than each other too. So yeah, I'm not going to run through that on endless mode. Uh, it's kind of a nightmare. But endless mode, I'm sure some people will get a kick out of. Um, I'm aiming to have a lot of replay value in the cards. I have endless mode. I'm going to add in a photo mode. Because essentially with photo mode, I can just make it so instead of every 10 seconds, the difficulty going up, it goes up when you take a photo. Makes sense, right? Um, whether I want you to be able to take infinite photos or more likely I'll probably make it so you can provide a difficulty modifier for a card for each photo to modify. And you can say, okay, take five photos of this card and, and you did it or something like that. So instead of 1.2, you could say, make it twice as hard every time. Make it get really out of control really quick. I want to make Kaguya's awful ceiling card or something. And like that. So I have that planned. That's not implemented yet. But the other modes are currently regular, endless, and turbo, which is an absolute meme. And right now the boss doesn't take damage because I forgot to red on a code. But uh, turbo mode, good luck clearing anything. But there are some people out there who like to play Toho games on higher FPS. So in an attempt to maybe abuse them and give weird people who are really good at these games something to do, you can play this. So this makes everything but your character. And actually, I guess it makes your bullets go faster too. I should probably change that. Essentially, it makes the game besides you go at double speed. The timer should still work, but... Oh, right now it's the timer that's stuck right now, not the HP. That is some bad rain outside. There's a chance I could lose power tonight, by the way. If I disappear all of a sudden, well, you know why. But yeah, turbo mode, nasty stuff. Um, the stats don't track properly for it, so... The game isn't going to remember if I beat this, I don't think. But let's just see if we can beat, like, an easy card. Or I guess in this case, a normal card. On turbo. It really isn't that bad for this card, I guess, but, like... For 90% of the patterns, Turbo is just, oh god, let me out, <laughs> kind of difficulty. You just don't really get time to think. Are some of my bullets going through Rumia or something? I swear this should have already been over. Something might be weird here. I haven't really tested this. I implemented it within like 10 minutes, if not less. Oh, she's spinning. I can barely hear the game over the rain. Oh, see right there, that speed on those bullets is already faster than the lunatic. Not as dense, but God, it feels bad. Let me see how patchulies feel like this real quick. Okay, <laughs> they feel bad. That's for sure. I went through a lot of variations on like the little bullets that appear like over here to the sides, by the way. You can barely see where my mouse is over all this, I'm sure, but you see what I mean. Like, the little flame bolts that don't really go anywhere. Originally, I actually just fired, like, a bunch of bullets out in that range yourself, but I was having issues for whatever reason. Maybe my laser angles are coded strangely. Like, getting Patchley to fire them at just the right ranges. So I decided this would be a bit more interesting and also look better and be more consistent. And these bolts will never hit you unless you get really far in endless mode. At which point, there, the... I'll actually show it off real quick. Let me go to endless. It's possible for the lasers to get so close to each other 
that like the range that they fire passes over the distance from one laser to the next. So you can see like they're supposed to like get relatively close to the laser next to them. And uh, I purposely made it so the, the lasers at the edge of your safe zone don't fire. But eventually in Lunatic Endless, or any Endless for that matter really, it's kind of going to fall apart. And that's that's honestly fine. Endless is not supposed to be like something really well polished or balanced. I try to like fix any obvious like exploits you could use. Uh, this is why... Well, it's not the sole reason, but I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. It's why... Ch not Chen. Rumiya's, um wall slam card is the way it is. Yeah, it, it takes a bit for it to actually reach this point. We're actually already a minute in, jeez. Yeah, you might be able to see them coming kind of close, like up here. I actually did code it, so they're faster out here than they're up here to account for the possibility of like... Well, you can't just have one speed and have it look good. It needs to go faster so they travel further as you get further from Patchouli. There's a lot of stuff that goes into making these. Oh, you know what? Actually, I might have made it so the lasers don't increase in number. I don't remember if I did that or not. Yeah, it looks like I did. Okay, so what I'm talking about doesn't actually apply anymore, does it? Never mind, I'm senile. Gotta say, though, uh, this, uh, this ain't looking too possible past the 100 second mark, but it's performing pretty well. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty late show, right? Ooh. Okay. Let's get out of there. So, yeah. Eventually, I'm gonna actually code something today, by the way. I'm just kind of talking about stuff that's interesting to me for a little while. So, for Rumia, Blind Predator. There's so many aspects to this card, which is why it took me a while to balance it and, like, get it to a point where it's fun for hopefully all skill levels. The thing is, um... So, in its first iteration, Rumia could move randomly, so you could potentially have her kind of, like, block off the leaves a little bit for you, and it could make it hard to, like, get around, and um, there was also the downside of, like, well, every time I hit the leaves, I have to wait for Rumia to finish her attack again to direct her around. So, let's say, like, she's at the top of the screen. Well, how are you going to direct her higher? You can't really do that. You'd have to direct her down, then back up, and that takes a long time. It's a lot of just waiting, which sucks. I've yet to add hitboxes. Um, there, there, there's hitboxes. Um, I'll turn on the hitbox drawing mode and show that off in just a minute, actually. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucked. That was the initial version of the card that I had, and I had people test it, and some of them it's frustration and too much waiting. It's like okay, and I recoded it to the second variant where, um, there's no cooldown on moving Ramia. You can touch leaves, and even mid-dash, mid-attack or whatever, touch more leaves, she'll go straight to you again. So, it's a bit more hectic if you wanted it to be. You could move her wherever you wanted really quickly. But the trade-off was that she had a lot of bullets that lingered, so if you keep moving her without planning it out, you'll kind of fill the screen with a lot of little, little obstacles that you'll have to, you know, weave through. The bullets stick around for like 10 seconds. And I thought that version was okay. Um, but I, I decided to rework it again. I went for a walk and just kind of had like a little epiphany on this. And I came up with the idea of having her spin in a circle. So this instantly deals with the problem of her like blocking off the leaves or sitting in the corner of the screen where you can't reach her. And it gives the player a lot more control and it still kind of keeps the like hunting theme. She's like circling you, but she doesn't really know where you are until you give yourself away. So I feel like it still gets it across pretty well. But the, the downside, and I wasn't really sure how to deal with this at the time, was, okay, let's say you're playing on an endless mode. Um, what's stopping you from just dodging this the entire time, right? Which, sure, it, it eventually will get hard, I promise you, it will. But you could make it a lot further in the card if you just did this than if you hit the leaves. So, if you don't do anything for 15 seconds, that happens. It does a wall of leaves, so you're forced to hit them. That happens in all the modes. 
because this solves two birds with one stone. It solves the problem of you being able to stall out the card and make it boring in endless mode. It also solves the problem of players who might not realize what you're supposed to do here. Now, there, there are a few clues. There's the fact that you can't damage your Mew when the darkness is up. The darkness doesn't go away no matter how long you last. And I guess that, that's essentially all the clues. But, um, yeah, some players might, honestly, logically, it, it's not really that much of a stretch to assume that the leaves hurt you. But by doing this, and I did explore a couple other possibilities, like putting like a green circle around them, but that kind of felt like too in your face and like too much yellow drawing of lines on the wall. So, especially in like Hardened Lunatic, I'm like, well, wh where do I like cut this off? Like, do I want to account for players who are first timing Lunatic and show them how the card works? Do I want to make it so it shows up until you capture the card? Like that, that's like too much scripting for like one little problem. I don't want to have to add all these like edge cases. So in the end, I went with the Wall of Leaves, which I think is a pretty decent compromise. So let me just turn on hitbox mode real quick here. Vision, you can't see uh, this little search window, I guess. Didn't set it up. Yeah, this is supposed to work with a shortcut. I don't know why that's the case. I'm just looking at this real quick here. Oh, oh, okay. I see, I see. Okay, I can fix that. Hold on. I think. Actually, no, I don't really know why it's not working. Uh, well, whatever, though. Oh, no, I do. I do. Okay, I'm fixing this right now. It'll work in game now. Um, okay, I think that's good. It was because... I used to follow the bad programming practice of using 0 and 1 for bull checks, but I'm trying to slowly adapt my code to use true and false instead, explicitly. Um, it was coded to check for the variable to equal 1, but the actual button was setting it to true or false when I toggled it. So let me go to Patchley's card, for example, here. And turn on hitboxes. I'll make myself invincible too. So the hitboxes only appear when the bullet is within your cell, I think, or a cell adjacent to yours. So I don't have a function to draw the lines. I used to, but it broke when I like started restructuring stuff after doing Ed's album vector. My old jam game. Um, but there's, there's like invisible cell grids here, so the collision, obviously, you don't want to have to check for the collision of 7,000 bullets every frame. So what you do is you check to see which cell a bullet is in, and if it's close enough to the player that it could feasibly, like, hit you, and you have to account for, like, bullets in adjacent cells for if, like, the bullet is within multiple once. If it's close enough to feasibly hit you, it checks for it. Stuff like lasers, I check no matter what. Um, because it's hard to really say what cell a laser is in when it can cover the whole screen, right? So, those are just always active, because there's usually not, like, 2,000 of them on the screen anyway, unless you're doing something really wrong with your patterns. So yeah, uh, that's what it looks like when you actually draw the hitboxes. There's a few bullet types that you haven't seen yet that I eh, maybe I'll use in the new card, who knows, but... I have stuff like knives, kunai... Um, potato bullets, kind of like uh, little philosopher's stone bullets that I mentioned, and a couple others that I put in just for like testing purposes. I have the sun and the moon from Ed's album factor, which are kind of goofy. Here, you you want to see something really stupid? Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, wrong card. This is Chen's. Where's Chen's? You can't hand gone. Normal. Orange, search for large. Uh, sun, no. Let me try something. Th this might not even work because it's such a radical change, but I can easily change bullet types like this. Watch this. Oh, no, it crashes, which is funny. Hold on. I, I actually know why it crashes, I think. Let me check something here. So this is how my data is stored here. Um, the bullets are over here right now. Oh, oh, right, it's Huge Sun is the internal name, not Regular Sun. I don't have Regular Sun bullets anymore. Uh, but yeah, here's like the Sun's sprite sheet here. It's not too exciting. 
It is giant though. It's uh, 750 by 750 for each sprite. And here's the info. This is all that the game needs to know. This is the name. This is the size of each frame. This is how many colors there are. The sun just has no colors, just a base color, so we write none. This is how many frames for each animation cycle. This is the speed. Hitbox shape, hitbox radius. If, if you use a rectangle, then it takes hitbox width and uh, length instead. Simple. Getting the game to like read all that and apply it, a little bit less simple, but I've got it working. The point is, uh, this is going to look really silly now. Oh, it actually works. It actually works, kind of. And I might be wondering why they're not turning into the mice bullets, though. That's not a bug, per se. Um, it's just how I coded this. Uh, so, right now, this is coded. So, when the bullets bounce off the walls, it checks to see the, the type of the bullet. So, if it's a large bullet, um, it'll, it'll pop make a bolt effect, and spawn a mouse. It doesn't do it for the regular size Mekon bolts, just the big beefy ones, the beach ball ones. So because those are huge suns, obviously it's not going to work. So that's fine. And there's a couple other things in here to check it as well. This is probably a really inefficient way of doing this, but I don't care. This this card has like 10 times less bullets than Patchouli's cards. It's fine. I can be a bit inefficient and check through all the bullets every frame if I want. I can leave your FPS behind. No one will stop me. So, I think I've shown off everything in the game so far. So this is probably a good point to come up with an idea and actually try to code it. Um, let me just real quick before we do that, just go use the bathroom, heat up um, a coffee that I saved from earlier and everything, and I'll be right back. So just, just a minute to recharge here. I've been blabbing on for an hour after all at this point, but I will be right back. Oh my god, if you guys could hear that wind right now, that is nasty, seriously. Bring stuff like slam around out there. Oh, we lost the lid off my garbage bin. Wouldn't be surprised. Before I started streaming, I went into uh, use the bathroom and grab like a new pair of pants or something. And I walked into the bathroom. And as I was staying there at the toilet using the bathroom, I looked over and I saw what I initially thought was 
just like a tuft of cat hair on the floor, you know? You know, as an example, just so, something like this, because I have nine cats. There's a lot of these. It was a spider. Was a spider around like this size or bigger? Probably around like here, like over an inch. It was big. Um, so I had to just have a stare down with this thing as I'm standing there peeing and thinking like, okay, what do I do? And I realized like, I walked past this when I entered the room. My feet were probably less than a foot, probably half a foot from this thing. I could have stepped on it. It could have crawled up my leg. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> um, sorry. Family's worried about the wind. Uh, but yeah, I, I crushed that thing with paper towels, and even though you're not supposed to, I flushed it right down the toilet. You're not supposed to flush paper towels down the toilet. I don't care. Um, because I don't want to have to, like, squish the paper towels around my hand and see the spider. I don't want to have to check and make sure it's totally dead. I want that thing gone, and I want it out of my sight. So, yeah. That was, uh, my day. I haven't seen many spiders in a while, which is really nice. Probably one of the biggest ones I've had to personally kill. Bigger than an inch spider is tiny? No, 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 no. No, you don't get it. Like, have you ever played Great Fairy Wars? You know how Zun says, like, all these Danmaku patterns are actually really easy. They just seem really hard because they're from Cerno's perspective. From my perspective, that spider was the size of a house. <laughs> I am Cerno. I am the Ice Fairy, okay? I don't know how I would have reacted if I would have, like, tried to kick it off and, like, slam my leg into something, like, tripped and fell and hit the bathtub or something. If that thing crawled up on me, I don't know because I haven't had that happen. The couple times in my life I've had a spider on me, uh, typically it's been like on my back or something like that. Maybe on my head once. Typically someone sees it and they're like, hold still. <laughs> you know, I'm sure everyone's had that happen a few times in their life. I've had one like right on my shoulder once that I noticed like out of the corner of my eye and like, <laughs> like that. A couple nasty things like that have indeed happened. But yeah, anyway, so what I want to do for a pattern, I have no idea. Um, there's a couple things I don't want to do. I don't want to have to make any new bullets right now. I don't want to have to make any new assets of any sort right now. Um, I, I could like grab a, a song for a character. I could do that at most. Um, I could do a second Chen card and finish off Chen. I could do another PCB character. I don't really care. I, I could do an, uh, an Imperishable Knight character, maybe. I'm not really restricting it too hard. Um, I haven't really decided what I want to do for the second PCB character yet, honestly. Chen, I went with because I had the idea of doing like a, a cat transformation card for. And like having her act differently depending on her form or something like that. I don't know. Details very hazy. I have nothing to go off with there yet. But that's why I picked Chen and eventually I settled upon um, what, what I had, the Mikon Hankon card. Um, other PCB characters, uh, we got Letty. Letty could do stuff. Bullets could pass through her vapor and do things, kind of like Zone has her do. He actually leans into her gimmick decently well, surprisingly. Um, Alice has plenty of options, I guess. There's a lot of things you could do with dolls, but I don't have doll sprites right now, so I don't really want to do that. Uh, Lily White, I don't really know where to start. <laughs> I actually still have to like capture her patterns like on, on video too because I'm really not familiar with them besides like her PCB stuff. But she's got like, isn't she in a uh, hundredth black market? Or am I remembering wrong? I, I, I can't remember. I, I feel like she has something that I don't have directly in my memory that I want to check. Uh, Prison River Sisters, I definitely want to do, but I feel like if I'm going to do them, I should do all three of them at once and do a patterns for all of them like I did in its element factor. And that also raises the point of, I don't have the functionality for group cards right now, and that'll come later. I have to think about how I want to implement that. I do want there to be group cards in the game. I want it to be set up so you could go to Chen's tab and find any cards that she has together with Ron. 
or any cards that Reimu shares with Marissa that they both team up on. But that's a bit annoying to code with the way I have the folders set up right now, which is like this. I'll show this off real quick here. So when the game loads up, it goes into this Donmaku folder here. And actually, I haven't finished filling out this folder here yet. I have the data, but I just haven't written it in there yet. Essentially, what it does as an item card. Oh, right. Yeah, it summons her, right? And if you beat her, you get something. Am I thinking of... Is, is that 19? It, it, it's in, anyway, anyway. Not really too important. So it scrolls through all these. It loads up all these just in alphabetical order. Let's go to EOSD here. So the game by default doesn't know that EOSD is Toho 6. I don't hard code any of that. What it does is it opens up the EOSD folder and it's like, please provide me gamedata.txt. And you open this up and it has the info that you need. So it's very simple. You have the English name, the English abbreviation, then the Japanese name, Toho Komakyo, then Japanese abbreviation, just Komakyo, and the sort order. So sort order, for right now I'm just using Toho order generally. So I have the PC98 games, nothing for them. Their folders are totally empty right now, I believe. And yeah, that's essentially how this works. Then once it's loaded up the game, it's like, okay, you gave me a game. Do you have anything cool? Uh, you have these icons, which are the same as what you've seen in game already. The Japanese and English ones. And in addition, you have character folders. So it loads these in alphabetical order and it adds them to its character table. Let's say we go into the Cerno folder. It has this stuff here. This should actually not be named Sprite anymore since I added the animation system, but just pretend that this is idle. So cozy in our code art. Art art is nice. Wait, what did that save to? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's just sitting. Forget the rainbow sit. I, I like Lily sit. No, it's rare that you, you see her when she's not like excited about spring. She's just like basking in under the cherry trees. Very nice. So, uh, the Rumi and Patchley folders are actually set up properly, so let's go into one of them instead. Let's do Patchley first since she's a bit more basic. So, we found the Patchley folder. The game asks for characterdata.txt. We look at this. This has a bit more to it. We have the names here. We have the titles in both languages. For now, these are copy and pasted from a game of my choosing. This is their origin, which could be a book name. It could be a game name. It could be Super Mario Brothers. It could be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Toho. Uh, this is the music track. I need to rework this to like allow for multiple tracks and stuff for making other tracks be on a pattern basis. Don't care right now. It's fine. It works. No order and individual frame size. So Patchley, as you'll see, just has not too much. Also, you can't see this whole thing, I'm sorry. Uh, she just has a cut-in, an icon, and an idle sprite. So that's that's fine and all that. Let's go over to Rumio. So Ferdy's doing the art for this. Um, so you might recognize, hey, Rumio looks different. That's because Ferdy drew her. Ferdy did a great job, obviously. He's going to be doing more animations for Rumio, but this is what I have for now, and it works for what I need right now. So essentially, there's more info here. This is like frame data and stuff like, hey, this is how many frames that this animation has. This is what she does when she moves. Does she spin around? Does she just reverse and like go boom, boom, whatever. Stuff like that. Nothing too important. I'll tech, tech Garbo. But yeah, we have sprites here. We have the cut-in, which is just a bigger version and all that. Then we get into the pattern details. So we have trail at night. And again, it looks for a data file. So this has the name and stuff, background, and a couple flags for efficiency here. If there's no animated bullets, you set this to zero, and the, the draw check gets a bit simpler to help save on, I don't know, GPU cycles or whatever. It makes it faster. Same thing with this. You can say how many different layers of bullets you have. So every layer, it's going to cycle through the table once after all. It's probably not the best way to do it. I should probably add them to like little sub tables. Not really the time. I'm not optimizing tonight. I don't care. Optimizing. I've done enough of that. Just me. But yeah, I think you get the general just as to how stuff is sorted. There's four different difficulties here and whatnot. 
So if I want to add like multi-character cards, that begs the question like... Well, since you can like add and remove characters, if it's for a character that comes with the base game, then sure, it's as simple as saying... Ooh, the mic. Started cracking after only an hour, huh? I plan on doing some tests for that soon, trying to narrow down like... If it's the mic, the PC, the cable, the little like mic hub I have or what. But I haven't gotten to it yet. Because I have to just leave it for an hour to see when it starts crackling if it does, basically. So. Essentially, the gist is, let's say I wanted a combo card between Rumi and Cerno. Well, first of all, which character's folder would I put that in? I'm thinking... I'd probably have a folder for, like, combo cards. And in the folder would be a data file that says, like, characters present, Rumia, Cerno, or something like that. And maybe a way to, like, identify them in case there's two characters with the same name. Like, we have, um, you know, Mai from Mystic Square, and we have Mai from Hidden Star in Four Seasons, because thanks, Zun, you did it. We have two Mai's now. You also have PC98, Reimu. Different Reimu, I want to put her in individually. But let's, let's not worry too much about that. Let's say it checks the game name and the character name. And if it gets a match, it's like, okay, found them. Um, do you have them installed? Um, if yes, everything is good. It displays them. If no, I'll probably just have it display a placeholder image. And if you don't have them installed, um, you're only going to find that character info in one character. Or something like that. Um, but let's say you've got, yeah, Rumia and Cerno. You could find the card in-game, in the card browser in Rumia, in her menu, in Cerno's menu, and in a team card menu. That way, let's say you don't have Rumia or Cerno installed, so you don't have a menu for either of them. You could still put the card with placeholder ball sprites by going to the team card menu. This way, let's say someone makes, like... A resource pack for Cerno, maybe you could plug that in and replace the sprites or something like that without breaking compatibility. Or let's say everyone has the Rumia and Cerno graphics, so it's expected that you have them even though they don't come with the game. They do, but let's pretend they don't. So instead of making you re-download the graphics every time, people just provide a card that you can put into the folder. And you're expected to have the graphics, but if you don't, the card still works, just without the graphics. I think that would be somewhat ideal. Um, but you could see how there's complexities there. That's why I haven't done it yet. I'm stalling on it, essentially. I really don't want to have to code it. Do you know how much work it was getting this nightmare of a system going? Here, I'll show you. It was this. All this. All this shit loads up the files. This is a lot cleaner than it used to be, too. Trust me. Uh, this is actually the only file where I have like these comments that like split up sections because this file was such a goddamn mess. I split up the functions a lot more so it's actually readable if I ever have to go here and do anything. But essentially this file is what like um, recurses through the folders and finds the correct stuff and processes it how it's supposed to. Uh, essentially it all works for me now. There's a few questionable parts like how I store the music over here right now. Um, I might change that. I might like put these in Rumia's folder. I haven't really gotten there yet. I'll get there later. It's okay. For, for now, this is fine. Eventually, I want to build a little music from there and from here, like from the default assets folder, probably, but who cares? Anyway, let's get done with it. So, no Prism River Sisters tonight. Yomu. Let's see. I have some of Yomu's bullets. I have arrowheads. I don't have like her scimitars or like curved swords. Those I don't have. So I could only use um like knife bullets for, which I do have. Um right over in here. Knife. Like knife bullets. These are a little bit different looking than Zen's, but I'm pretty satisfied with how they turned out. They're probably one of my least favorite ones, but I think they look acceptable, basically. Just acceptable enough. Let me show some of the others real quick. Here's the prison bullets I did. Uh, I kind of did these by mistake. Um, because at the time, I was reworking the diamond bullets. 
Which are these ones, also known as like race boards by some people, I guess. I didn't like how these looked, so I was reworking them. And in doing so, I accidentally found this one Photoshop effect that made these cool looking crystal guys. So I made them and haven't used them yet. Oops. But they exist. They are there. And let's see what else do I have that hasn't been shown off. Uh, I do have hard bullets. I had some in Ed's Isle Infector. I redid them a little bit here. They're very similar to how they used to be though, still. Uh, I have Kunai. So we're fun to sprite. Not really. They're very, very tiny. Um, most of my bullets are twice the size of Zen's because I use a different resolution. The kunai, I kept the same, so these are incredibly small in game, at least for now. Unless I change my mind later. If those exist and can be used, so I could do someone like Ron Yukari, probably. I don't have butterflies yet, though. Large bullets you've already seen in Mekon Hencon. Potatoes and rings and whatnot aren't that fast, and you've seen some of them already anyway. So yeah, um... Help me out here. What 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 should I do? I could alternatively do a different character. I'm not too picky with who I make a card for right now, really, to be honest. I'm open to possibilities, I suppose, let's say. So I just need inspiration, basically. I don't really have too many like possibilities written down besides like some of these patchly ones and a couple rather characters like a couple for chen i wanted to do a card called cat call where she summons cats but then i realized that's not really how she names her cards so i can't just write cat call here <laughs> that's fine if i really want i'll find a way to name it that makes sense but i don't have the cat sprites so these are off the table for tonight so let me just think here. Um, I could always just take another EOSD character. I feel like a lot of them are relatively simple to make stuff for. I feel like with PCB, Zen took most of the characters and gave them a lot of variety in what they do. Like, they don't have very consistent pattern themes. Someone like Letty, I guess, yeah, she's kind of simple, but a lot of characters use all sorts of different colors. Alice is the rainbow colored puppeteer, after all. Chen uses every bullet in the book. The Prism River Sisters are three characters. <laughs> but they don't really get that many solo cards, so it's hard to say if they have anything consistent. Um, Yomu. I guess she has a couple cards that are very similar to each other. She's probably the most consistent character, honestly. Besides, arguably, Yuyuko. It's okay for Ron and Yukari to have a lot of variety since the Redster bosses, I think. But, in general, it's a little bit trickier to design for PCB than it is for EOSD. In EOSD, it's very simple. I can say, okay, Rumia uses primary colors and yellow. And sometimes she has lasers, not too often. Uh, she has a lot of stuff that's aimed directly at the player. And she has twisty bullets. It, it's relatively simple making stuff for Rumia, I think. And I can just add in darkness, give mix however I want on top of that. Um, Zerno has some interesting stuff I could maybe do. Freezing bullets is something that Zen only really used once for. Because you don't really get to fight Zerno outside of USD and I guess PCB is a mid-boss, who cares. Forget PCB, it's not like it's the most well-known game or anything. But, Zerno is a pretty good possibility. Maybe I should do something for her. I actually had a few spare minutes Well, I think watching something yesterday, I can't remember when it was exactly, but I actually did write up um, a document for Serto. And I have one for Lily, wait no, for Diosi that's almost blank. Um, not because there, there's almost nothing to write, which is also true, but just because it's basically placeholder stuff. Like here's Serto's description here, oops. Here I, I filled out the rest here that says like, uh, Naming sense, none. Spell cards, none. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get her non spells or something at least. But for Cerno, I have all of her cards here. Uh, these are. USD. I 
Kree's Actress is from the PCB trial and didn't get used, but I put it in here anyway because I like that. Cool. These are from PCB. Just these. These must be all fighting game cards besides... Minus K, I think, is Shoot the Bullet. What the hell is Cold Divinity? Is this Shoot the Bullet? I... Yeah, it has to be. So these are shoot the bullet. These are all fighting game cards. Um. Oh, all right. There's there's also stuff like Phantasmagoria shot types, which have like their own names. Um, those have actually come up a couple times when translating stuff. They're they're pretty obscure. A lot of people don't know about those. Um, but if I were to go onto the wiki right now, and go to like let's say Lyrica's page and scroll down to spell cards or skills i'm not sure which uh let's see let's double check here yeah so under spell cards yeah you have her pofb cards that she uses when summoned like soul noise flow and lyrica soul alive okay some people might know about those but did you know that she has a charge attack called keyboard spirit and her ex attack is called phantom noise but you didn't even know they had names. They do. So there's stuff like that sometimes that you have to also factor in when, like, documenting things. Sakuya has, like, um, another murder, which um, gets used in GOS. So, hey, that wasn't something Hachikuma made up. That's from Toho. That's why you've probably seen it in a couple other games before, too. It is a pretty badass name, honestly. <laughs> But yeah, some of the stuff is a little bit more obscure. And I think that's, like, interesting stuff to work with, too, at times. Um, where was I going with this? Nowhere in particular, but... Uh, something from here is probably from POFV. I don't even know what. I, I have no idea, frankly. But yeah. Not super important. What if I have, like, bomb names in here? I don't know. Well, most of these characters don't really bomb anyway, but I'll eventually put in that kind of thing for, like, playables. Cerno technically has Perfect Freeze, which is different from Freeze Sign Perfect Freeze, but I excluded it because that's stupid. <laughs> it's up to B. It's my list. It's it's a list for me. Just me. Shout out to Toy Dog. I don't know much about that kind of thing. I do have, um... Like, like I said, I was working on... My desktop I actually have... Where, where is it? Where is it? Desktop is a little bit messy. It's not too bad, though. Docs? Somewhere on my computer, I have, like, a written works file where I have some more data I need to plug in here at one point. Because I didn't get everything written in here the day I was doing it. Uh, because I started adding stuff to the written works folder, like, in a different day, because... Well, you gotta, like, look up stuff, and, like, some of these characters have, like, weird titles on the wiki and whatnot. But, yeah. Renosuke will someday have spell cards. I, I don't know what. I don't know what kind of card. But he'll have something, maybe. He's at least programmed into the game. I've taught my game what a Renosuke is. Just, just barely. Just barely. So, right now, I'm kind of leaning towards Cerno, even though that means I'd be straying from PCB. Let me just think real quick. If I were to do Imperishable Knight, um, I don't have some bullet types in there. I don't have stars. I don't have suppositories. Like that's what Leica is then. I have seen Leica in Genso Band and always wondered what it was. Here you go then. I've never read all of um, Renosuke's book. I actually do own it. I've read a bit of it, but that was like so many years ago. I could probably speed through it pretty quickly nowadays. My Japanese was still pretty slow back then, honestly, so, like, reading books was pretty challenging, but I can just kind of do it now and just have a good time. As good as good of a time as I would with English books, probably. Maybe better. So, let's see. If I were to do Imperishable Knight, I'd have to do some special coding for Mystia's Darkness mechanic if I use that. Um, so let's avoid that. Riggle... I think we'll have a thing where, like, her bolts shake. Like, when they're about to, like, hatch into different bugs. 
I think I need to set aside some time for Regal, and I'd have to get her patterns anyway. I'm not really too familiar with them, though there's only a few, mind you. Um, especially with characters that are in Shoot the Bullet that I'm not too familiar with their patterns. I want to pay close attention to those because those get less attention usually. You know, typically when people think patch leaf, they probably think of USD. Even though a subtle Imawadi is kind of iconic for, piece, uh, for Shoot the Bullet for me, even though I hate it. It's cool. I always remember it for whatever reason. I don't know why. When I think Shoot the Bullet, I think of Satellite Himawari. Don't know why. But, um, let's see. Kane. So, Kane has, like, the whole thing where, like, some bullets switch based on whether they're focused or unfocused. If memory serves, I think she might only use it for her non spells. But I would definitely want to implement that. Oh, and you know, if I were to do. Imperishable Knight. Imperishable Knight's whole thing is like the bullet spawning slave objects. And I do have like special objects I could spawn kind of in place of those, I guess. But I don't have like magic circle graphic or anything for those yet. So Imperishable Knight's probably good to hold off on. Because Kana uses a ton of those. I mean, all the characters in Imperishable Knight do. Like Kana's got like a whole pyramid of them and whatnot, that kind of thing. Marissa, obviously no stars, can't do. Uh, Reimu, I don't have talismans yet, can't do Reimu, don't have yin yang orbs yet either really. Grayson, no suppositories. Aaron, what bolts does Aaron use? I don't have bubbles yet, which kind of sucks. Um, I actually have a sheet, I'm keeping track of like which bolts I still need. And the big bubble bullets are one of the only ones that I still need from EOSD, if not the only one I think. I just haven't made them yet. Just haven't gone to it. So if I do like Remelia, she won't have bubbles for example. Um, yeah, a lot of the characters use stuff I just don't have yet. I guess Kagi is on the table. Maybe Moko, depending on what I wanted to do. Like, I have the fire and the flame bullets. But I think, let's try to do something with Cerno. Let's just choose that. I don't want to sit here forever debating over what to do. So let's go over here and I'm just going to copy and paste um one of rumia's cards just so we can get started oh yeah and another thing for some cards with special objects that have their own unique graphics that can't just be drawn with like built-in drawing functions they get loaded like this so like the leaf pile here is in its own special folder that essentially any character could theoretically have on a specific pattern so it only loads this up when you do this pattern and, and it deloads it afterwards just to be a little bit more efficient so yeah sure enough um, paste that. Zerto pattern. Let's put this in here. I'll name that as N, so we'll do a normal mode array at first. And just let me also get pattern data.txt. Rename this to idle, otherwise I won't find it. I'm doing that as I go. I got confused when I loaded up Chen last night for the first time because I've been doing patchly stuff for like a straight week. I was like, why is it? Displaying Rumia's sprite, it's because it's a fallback for if it can't find idle.png. Initially, I just put these in as like sprite.png, but when Pretty gave me the sprites and I put in the animation system, I figured, okay, it should be named idle since that's the idle sprite slash animation. So now it has to be named that. Anyway, let's see. Something, something, something. We'll just leave it as trail at night here. So order one. I don't care about the background right now. I need to like do a proper background system at one point with like moving and like effects and rotating. I'll get there. It's been like literally over 10 years since I've done one of those. Hell, I think the only time I've ever done up a background system was in Game Maker. I don't even think I was 20 at the time. <laughs> um, I remember a lot of how it's done. Um, I could probably handle it a lot better these days, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. I'm in no rush. I don't know what she's going to have yet, so we'll just keep these on, otherwise the bolts will be invisible, which would be funny. What's not? Really? Okay, so. Let's load this up. I don't even need this internal name thing anymore, probably, but it, it exists right now. It exists. It's like an old um, remnant of Exile Infector system. So just a few days ago, that got passed into every single bullet as well. So you had to like put it here in the arguments and it got messy. 
but I got rid of that just recently because it doesn't really need to be there. If a bullet needs to like know, if it needs to reference the boss, the boss is just a boss object. You just do this like boss.help. And if there's multiple bosses, I haven't really gotten there yet, but if there's multiple bosses, you could say like boss two, if name equals Rumia or whatever, something like that. Just check who it is to make sure you're doing the right boss. Simple enough. I'll figure it out basically when we get there. Okay, let's just get rid of some stuff here. We don't need these other attacks. And I'll kind of show off how I do this. Get rid of the special objects. We don't need those. I like to just double check up here in the window bar that you can't see that I'm actually in the right folder. I am, thankfully. Make sure I'm not actually deleting the real pattern. So. For now. Uh, we don't need movement or anything like that. We only really need... I don't really have any inspiration yet. I just want to kind of throw something out there and see where we go with it for now. So what I'm going to do is if modulo so I've got PV, PV stands for pattern variable. Um, just for convenience sake, I store like all these variables related to the pattern in here. Because if I want, I can just say, hey, we're just going to clear this whole thing out. I actually have a function that does that. And it just helps make, make things a bit more readable. So I know what's what and I can quickly browse because like, imagine all this without the green text. Um, if this were just, like, self bullet angle, this would be so much harder to read. And trust me, I've been there. I've done it like that. This is my first time doing this, like, PV table, but I'm really, really glad I did. Anyway, uh, this is something built into every boss. Um, assuming you don't cancel out this function, I guess, which is pretty staple. I don't know why you wouldn't want to call this. Um, this just ticks up by one every frame so this is this is like your baseline if you want you can put in more timers that's whatever you, you get that sorted you figure that shit out yourself you probably know how to program a little bit if you're doing that by the way i've never used donmakufu i have no idea how to do anything in donmakufu i don't know if it's like this or totally different someone else would have to tell me that i imagine it has like shortcut functions for probably like circles and stuff I might put those in eventually too, but right now I'm just kind of doing a lot of manual stuff since I'm used to a lot of this. So, uh, anyway, what I was going to do here, I have a module function, so I'll just show off what this is. So if anyone who doesn't know, you might not unless you've done specific kinds of math or programming before, what module does is so it's this like percent sign operator let's say we do 60 modulo 5. uh the way that this works is we'll get zero you know why uh because this returns the remainder so 60 divided by 5 is 12 but we don't care about the 12. we want to know how much is left over so if we do 61 divided by 5 then we get one because we go into 60 and we have one left over so essentially, what you can do with this is, let's say, 62, we get 2, 3, we're going to get 3, 4, we're going to get 4. But suddenly, if you do 5, you get 0 again. So you see what this does? It essentially is a countdown, or really a count up if you want to think about it. But you use this for, like, cycles. So what you can do here, I have a shortcut thing set up that basically ignores 0, because a weird quirk of module is if you do um, 60 modulo zero it returns true for whatever reason it's like yeah we don't have a remainder or rather it returns zero because it can't divide into it so i have a thing here because in the majority of situations i don't want that to return true but i have an optional parameter that lets it return true in those weird cases so 60 modulo 60 would be the first rather no sorry 60 modulo 5 would be the first instance Wait, no. No, sorry, I, I'm making this confusing. Essentially, every time 5 divides into this with no remainder, um, it will trigger this. So every 5 frames, it's going to trigger attack 1. Let me just copy some code from here. I probably should have kept that up. Oops, I can get it again if I need it. 
I don't like writing out my bullet creation code because it's really long. So let me just steal this. But yeah, let's see. I have an SFXQ system. So this takes two arguments. If I put this in here, it'll play the sound effect one second later. This is useful if I want to have bullets like change direction and play like a ding sound effect a second later. Instead of having the bullet do that, I can just do this. Because that way it's not going to happen 20 times for 20 bullets. It just happens once. So essentially every frame it just ticks down. These get added as like an instance of the sound system. It works. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to go over the bullet arguments real quick here. I kind of went over some of this stuff last time I put it on stream, but that was like a month ago now. So I'm not going to go over this every stream, but I'm going to go over it tonight. And past that, it'll just be when new stuff comes up or when people ask. If there's anything you're curious about here, go ahead and ask, by the way, but I'll give a brief tutorial as I go. So let's say we want plain bullet. I'm going to do a plain bullet. This is the color. We have the seven colors of the rainbow and black right now. Um, the way that the bullet system works lets me add in any colors I want on top of that. But right now, all the base bullets, besides weird ones like the sun and moon, have those. That's just the baseline I've given myself to work with for now until I need specialty stuff. So, we have bullet type, bullet color, the X value of where it appears, the Y value. This is the angle the bullet should travel at and face. This is the travel speed. This is the depth layer that it gets drawn on. And this doesn't need to be here anymore. And I thought I got rid of that. Eh? Oh, wait, where, where did I get that? That does not need to be there. I'll fix it later. It doesn't matter. It doesn't crash. It takes the extra argument. I thought I got rid of that, though. But anyway. Let's see. So I'm just going to see. So this is Cerno, right? Yes. OK. Let me just get rid of some of these base variables up here. So let's say we have, we're going to just call these the plane bullets. Plane angle, random angle. Plane quantity equals 12. What I'm going to do here for i equals 1. Delta.pv, plane quantity. For anyone that doesn't know, this is a basic for loop in Lua. It's going to make a variable called i. It's going to start at 1 and increment it until it reaches plane quantity. Then increment one more time, then stop. So it's going to do this 12 times. So the basic way to make a circle is to do this, then say the PV double angle. I should say plain angle, sorry. Oh, it's doomed for a second. Hope I don't lose power or anything. Tools? No, unfortunately in Lua, you can't do like plus equals one. That, that doesn't exist. It sucks. It's probably one of the biggest annoying things. So you have to do like this if you want to add one to a variable. But anyway, what you do is you add plus 360 divided by the amount. So essentially, that'll make us a perfect circle of 12 bullets evenly spaced. And it's going to do this every five frames. And right now, it makes a random angle at the start of the card. Let's make it so every time she does this attack, it changes the angle randomly. Uh, this is just a function I have that gives a random angle 0 to 360 using the boss's RNG. Each boss has their own RNG, like, system set up. I'm just waiting for the thing to get captured by OBS here so you can actually see it. So theoretically, this should give us a super simple Cerno card. Right, Cerno's not in that game. She's here. Something, something, something. Ignore that. I can fix that. So here you go. Simple. Look, it works, just like magic. Now, it might be hard to tell in this mess, but every circle there has 12 bullets. And the angle is always random, but the bullets are spread out evenly, so. Awkward silence. Um, I think the way this is set up, it'll actually reload this file, right? Yep, I can actually make changes without even um, reloading the game, because it reloads the script every time. I'm going to slow it down and do one wave a second. You can see it's working as it should. So that's a good start. Um, real quick here, let me just fix Cerno. That's super simple to do. I can just steal some stuff from Patchy's thing. It just doesn't know the correct size for the, the graphic, that's all. Let me just put this in here and make sure that's the same. Yep, 250, 325. Okay, that should be good. 
Okay, she should appear properly now. So. We have the basics. We have Sono set up to do something every second. Let's see what Sono is going to do. I don't have put a bit of her cards. So I'm kind of playing this by ear. So let's say we want something kind of like perfect freeze where the bullets will all stop. So if I wanted to make it so a bullet stopped one second after I fired it, that's actually really simple. I, I know how to do that. So I'm just going to go through that. That's not what we want here, but I'm just going to show off how I do this. So speed. So a complex bullet is a bullet that has an action tied to it in my engine. So this takes five arguments. Four, five? Five, I think. I believe five. The first is the action type. The second is the action amount. Uh, next is the action uh, repeat time. This is how often it repeats. Uh, the next is how many times it repeats before it stops. And then you have the delay before it starts doing it. That's all you need. So you'll, you'll, you'll see this. It's going to be very apparent what this is doing. These bullets are going to zoom. So every frame, they're going to have one speed added to them. Those bullets were moving at 2.5 times speed before, and they were by no means slow or fast. These are going to instantly kill me. It's going to increase the speed for 30 frames before it stops. I'm just going to show off what this system is like real quick, then we'll actually make it do something a bit more circle like. I'm invincible now. See, there you go. Look, I made Eternal Meek. <laughs> Here it is. So, essentially, if you want to have a bullet freeze, what you would do is set the speed change to negative whatever the bullet speed is, so 2.5 in this case. Uh, we don't care how often this triggers, I think. I don't know if it works if this is set to zero or not. We want this to happen one time. And I'm going to see. I might have to set that to one. I actually want to test and find out. Let's see here. I don't even know how my upload works. Waiting for the game to come up. Game. Hope yes. Yeah, it works. So those bullets immediately stop as soon as they're fired. Well, that's not very interesting, is it? Let's make it so they stop a bit later. In fact, let's let's make it so... They stop between 30 frames and 90 frames after being fired. Still, none of these bullets are going to reach you, so it's not going to be super interesting. But let's just show off what this can do real quick. So there's a bit of randomness here. Eventually you're going to see it. that's like the outer range of where her bullets are going to go. It makes a little circle. Cool, huh? Looks nice. Looks kind of nifty. You could maybe use this for something and do something based off this concept. Uh, it's kind of like Kyoko's stuff, except they don't bounce, basically. Anyway. Now, if we want... So, in Perfect Freeze, instead of all the bullets stopping independently, based on when they were fired, they all stop at once. So essentially, we run into the problem of, well, these timers are all different and we don't know, like, when we want the bullet to freeze. What we're going to do here is make these simple bullets, but what I'm going to do is make us a table here, an empty table. And now, every time those bullets are inserted, or rather, every time they're created, they're added to this table, so we can iterate over this. So let's actually expand on this a little bit here. I add a bit more speed to these. Let's see. I'm just going to do something else, too. So I have... Cycle... Red... Orange... Yellow... Green, blue, indigo, violet. I don't actually know how many arguments this thing can take. This might not work. Well, it only goes with the five right now. That's fine. Uh, this is essentially a lazy shortcut function that I have. It's going to cycle through these five whenever I call it. Uh, plain color equals red. So essentially, every time Cerno fires a bullet, 
it's going to cycle through these. Not at random. It's just going to go through them in order, so there's going to be an even distribution. So let's add in some more stuff. We're going to make this... We're going to imitate perfect freeze for a second. Clean speed. Um, yeah, sure. Equals 3 by default. So... We're going to do instead of modifying plane speed every frame is we'll just say we take plane speed plus the RNG uh, random one two so a bit of speed variance here actually zero three two uh, so I think that actually picks a whole number so what we actually want to do is zero through 20 divided by 10 so that'll give us like now it could be like 1.8 or 0.3 instead of just one or two or zero one or two. It'll give us more variance there. So we have some randomness. We have different colors now. So now what I'm going to do is make it so if self.pb attack climate is less than 300 and module, then we're going to do that. Sorry. Uh, let me actually do like this. Okay. This is the same thing, just formatted differently. Uh, yep, okay. Else, if self.pb act timer equals 300, then we're gonna run act 2 and reset the attack timer. We're actually gonna set it to negative 60, no, negative 90, so there's a pause. You'll understand it. So, let's make attack 2. Attack 2 isn't really an attack, actually. So I should actually probably name this differently. I usually, anything that spawns bullets is an attack, typically. Not always. Freeze bullets. So we're going to cycle through the entire plane bullets table and stop the bullets. So B dot speed equals zero. Simple. Super, super simple. Nothing else is going to happen quite yet. I want to just show the off this off first and see if it works. I'm just going to go step by step here. Let's take a slow. I'm thirsty as hell. I typed up something. Hold on. 45 do expected. Ah. Yeah, right. There we go. Okay. So. I need to die. Just go invincible for a second. There we go. So the bullets all stop. Check that out. Uh, the color isn't working because I forgot to tell it to actually use the color. It's hard coded blue. Oops. And for another thing, uh, we got bullet color equals black. I'm going to set this further back. So there's going to be a three second pause between waves now. However, I'm going to let's see. Let's lower this by a little bit. She's going to fire for 4 seconds before freezing stuff, then pausing for 3 seconds. The bullets are just going to pause and sit there. They're not going to do anything after. That's not really the point quite yet. So, can you hear that ding? That's just me turning on invincibility. Oh, I clearly messed up something with the, uh, the colors still. So you see here, we have the makings of perfect freeze. Is she not pausing for 3 seconds? That is definitely not 3 seconds. Sir, no, you are crazy. What are you doing? Is there something that's setting this to something it shouldn't? What is this? Sets it up by one. Okay. Oh. Oh, right, idiot. Back to... Uh, back to tell it don't do it if it's under zero. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea, huh? There we go. Okay. Uh, anyway, here, let's see. Um, is this not how this works? So it's setting it once, it's changing it once. Why isn't it changing it multiple times? That's strange. Hmm. I've used this before, um, back when I was... Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot I have to feed the variable into it, too. Because of how this works, it needs to, like be able to check the current state of the variable and it's better to do that like this than in 
the other way. Okay, there we go. I can probably stop rebooting the game every time, by the way, since the script is smart enough to take effect. I just have to hide it, and that, that's easy to forget. Okay, so get a load of this. Look, it's, it's a Cerno Rainbow. And the bullet stop. Cerno waits for a bit, and she does it again. You want to see her do it again? Because she will. So, now, let's do something else here. So in Perfect Freeze, after the bullets have stopped for a bit, they start moving after a delay in a random new direction. So, let's emulate that. For now, we're going to imitate, and then we're going to modify and come up with something original. But Perfect Freeze is too much of an iconic external concept, yet one that Zun has only barely explored. So I think it's a good foundation for a card, even if I don't really know where I'm going to take it quite yet. So we're going to make this into a complex bullet, but we're going to make it into a complex bullet too. So this is going to have two different actions. Um, the reason this is a separate object is for efficiency purposes, because otherwise um, every complex bullet has to have like built-in parameters or like take arguments and like check or like as many complex actions as your most complex bullet has, which is really bad. I actually only just changed this a couple days ago, but I feel like this probably helped performance a ton. So essentially, if you want five actions, then you request a complex bullet five and you tell it, you give it an entire dictionary worth of parameters, basically. This might seem stupid. I, I think it works decently well. So we need to add two parameters. The first is speed. So, in Perfect Freeze, the bullets slowly accelerate up to a given point. So, we're going to say add 0.1 speed every frame for 30 frames. Um, let's see. But well, you don't want to delay zero, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, how do I, I do this to the other one? Hold on a second. There's, there's a trick I used in Mekon Hencon. Essentially, here, let me just. Read back over this here. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. So essentially what I did here is, since I want to trigger this later, but I want to give it the parameters now, I tell it it doesn't have an action. But it has parameters, so it's just sitting on these, basically. It's sleeping on them. So we're going to do the same here. Pretend this says direction, but actually it's just going to say nil. So, self dot rng. Wait, no. Random angle, this is a nice shortcut, self dot rng. We're going to change the angle, um, essentially, to whatever. This is going to add anything from 0 to 360, which is functionally the same as just changing it. So that's fine, too. Um, so let's see. Um, we want to do this one time. We want to do this at max one time. Right, sorry, a delay of one. After that, that can be zero. It doesn't matter. One time. And with no uh, delay before starting. So, we have the parameters now. So, what we're going to do here is when we freeze the bullets. Oh, actually, I do want to give it a delay on before it starts. So, we'll do that. That's fine. A delay of one second, sure. So, essentially, what we're going to do is v dot action a type. Let me make sure that's the right name. I usually just feed into these, so I forget the names pretty often. There's a lot of them. Uh, action A type seems correct. Yes. Action A type equals speed. V dot action B type equals angle. It used to be called direction, but it should be angle now, I believe. Direction. Yep, besides the player, because that's the player's its own thing. Okay. Okay. Let's see if this works. No. Hold on. Crashed. Hold on a second here. I think I just missed something, probably. Just look through this. I don't think I closed that. Uh, no, hold on. So many arguments, it's hard to keep track of stuff. Am I closing this too early? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. There we go. My bad. All right. Uh, it's direction. It's direction. Okay, I think I think that's okay now. Probably okay. You'll have to grab a Cerno beam, by the way. I can actually probably insert one right now. Yeah, I can actually do that real quick. 
That won't take any time at all, actually. Let me just do that. I'll even show you how I go through the process. So right now I'm using a lot of my stream play. Let's do this. So I'm just going to name this as Cerno B1, which is then a boss one. So it's a range of Cerno's boss theme. Make a data file for this. And I'm just going to go over to my music play real quick here and just copy some stuff. This is the name. Uh, this is, um, let's go ahead and say Shitori in English. Shitori. Mellow. Mellow is good, yeah. Mellow, tomboyish, girl in love. This is just my own little translation I provide. I'm just going to put the artist name in here in both languages as well. Just uh, give them proper credit here. These are probably placeholders. I'd like to commission natural music eventually, but um, still. Name this so it matches the file name of the trap. And I need to go open up Cerno's character data file. And this doesn't have the music thing. Uh, is it music track? Hold on, let me just open up another one so I can check this. Yeah, so it's called music track. Let me just put this in here. And Cerno B01 should work. So now we should actually have music for Cerno. So it shouldn't just go silent when it goes back to the menu. I shouldn't actually quite be happening like that. I think, I'm actually not sure why that's happening. I, I don't really care right now. Got an error. Line 40. Uh, okay, so this doesn't close? Hold on. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Let's let me look at this real quick here. Hold on. I know you can't see it, but you're not missing anything. I think it's good now. Yep. <coughs> okay, we have a nice mellow Cerno theme here. But theoretically, this is going to emulate Perfect Crease. Check it out. We made Perfect Crease. The, the speed is different. That's fine. We're not trying to rip off Perfect Crease. We're trying to emulate it so we have a starting point here. But look at that. Obviously, Perfect Crease is a pretty simple card. There's like no math really involved in this besides timing, which is nice, you know? But here's a nice balanced Perfect Crease. We know that it's going to cover all the directions pretty well because she fires rings of bullets instead of individual ones. But if she's just firing one bullet every frame, the bullets might all go downwards if you're unlucky. You know, astronomical odds or something. But we prevent that by doing circles. It evens out the screen's bullets a lot more. It's not that inefficient because the bullets that go off screen die pretty quickly anyway. Like if you watch the bullet bounce. Let's give it a sec here and you'll... You'll see it kind of like even out of eventually. Yeah, it doesn't really go above 400 very long. It hits 500 rarely. But you saw it like delete a bullet there. Yep, so we're not like wasting anything here in particular. Performance wise. coffee I've had today. Oh boy, too much. The answer is too much. So, what can we do with this? What can we do to make Perfect Freeze interesting and a bit more original? Um, how should we make Cerno move? Um, should the pattern be more static, more random? So, here's kind of where I consult my doc a little bit. For one thing here. Here's Soto's dock. So, I have some things here. She uses a lot of random sprays of bullets, a lot of blue and white. Uses rainbow and perfect freeze. Frozen bullets turn white. Many aimed patterns too. So a lot of random stuff and aimed. Soto doesn't have too many patterns that are like big, pretty arrays of math. Soto can't really do math except up to nine. She has like a lot of random just spam or she's firing stuff directly at you in an attempt to just hit you. You can see this in a lot of her patterns. Just from memory, at the very least. She uses lasers a couple times too, but not all, all, all that often. I actually forget where. I, is, is it maybe in Freeze Actress? Like the unused card? I'm not sure. Shoot the bullet, maybe? I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever this is, is definitely a laser, but that's probably 
from a fighting game. Anyway, not super important right now. I don't have footage for it right now. Haven't bothered to capture it quite yet. So, for one thing, um, what kind of bullets do we even want to use here? So the thing is, um, if we use um, a bullet with like a clear orientation, there's going to be kind of a snap when it changes direction. Um, if we wanted to get around that, we could, well, I don't really want to go to the trouble of making it gradually turn. And that has a lot, it, it's kind of complicated to code. I would have to like, I probably want to add a bullet action for it to make it work better because that might be the kind of thing I might want to use in the future too. Don't really want to do new code additions tonight. Just want to work with the tools I have. So another option would be making a bullet effect on top of it. So right now, um, you might not realize, let's see, let me bring up a card here as an example. Put up the game too in the meantime so it captures. I'm just going to change something real quick in a card here behind the scenes. Darrington event should be fine, I guess. So, I didn't notice this by watching, but I use bullet effects to cover up some ugly stuff sometimes. Is this here? Here we go. So, I'm just changing a single variable from true to false here on these lasers in normal mode, and you'll see. Oh, that's not actually like. <laughs> Uh, this is carrying kind of normal. Why is that? Well, that sure is strange. Well, either way, point is, I use bolt effects to show, like, the start of the laser origin. Otherwise, it would just be a flat plane of the laser there, and it wouldn't really look very good. I think Jin does this too, if memory serves, or he has, like, it, like, shrink down into, like, a little triangle dome kind of thing there. I can't recall offhand. Well, it depends on the game. But yeah, you can use that to like, cover things up. So let's say we wanted, for example, to have Cerno use... Oh, let's just throw out something silly here. So ignore the fact that all these say plain. We don't really care about right now. We're just going to say diamonds. I want to just show off what this would look like normally with no modifications. And then I'm going to do a couple things to change it. This is just theoretical. I don't know if I want to use one. I probably don't. We'll see. So, just watch this. See, this is a nice, pretty little spray, kind of like mailings patterns. But watch. So, depending on which bullet you're looking at, you might not even notice. But they all suddenly snap directions. And now it's not the most hideous looking thing by any means, but it's not really what we want. And also, another side effect um, of sloppy code is it's refreezing black bullets and it's like being weird with them they're like drifting a little i'm actually not sure why they're drifting in particular i guess because of the timing they're like getting stopped and they're speeding back up so anyway if the d.bullet color isn't black then do this if it's a black bullet it's already been frozen we've already processed it leave it alone it did nothing wrong but yeah, let's say I'm going to exacerbate the issue a little bit by making these potato bullets. They're a bit bigger. Actually, let's let's make them knives. Even better. So let's see. Let's grab my effect spawn code. I don't have to write this very often, so sometimes I forget how it goes. Be simple though. Okay. So we have knife bullets. Let's say we want to cover up the angle change. It's simple. You just do this. It's like one line of code. That's flashy looking. So, that didn't work. Why didn't work? Eh? Oh, because I wrote self instead of V, so it was spawning him on Cerno. My bad. Fixed. So, the thing with this is it's kind of too flashy. It's going to like cover the screen and yeah. It's going to give someone a seizure. So, we, we kind of don't really want to do that. It kind of looks god-awful, you know? So, that's one of the reasons why I'd rather just use a round bullet to begin with and avoid having to do that. 
if you've got less bullets on screen, or maybe if you have another bullet effect that's not quite as ugly, well, not ugly per se, but as flash, flashy, bright, it wouldn't be as bad, but I'd rather avoid the issue altogether. So let's just use round bullets here. Uh, let's see, we can ring small. I think they're called ring small, right? Not small ring. Let's check my assets here. Gameplay, bullets, ring small. Yes, okay. I like these guys. I think we'll use these guys. Certainly so uses these, so it's fine. So, let's just bring this back up and make sure everything's working as intended first. Then let's actually get patterning a little bit here. We fix some of the quirks. We have something that kind of works. He's a little bit bigger, a little bit fuzzier looking than Cerno's bullets, but the point still gets across. Personally, I don't really like how all of them just turn the same color like that. I think it looks kind of not great. But, eh. If anything, I would probably want to, like, only freeze certain bullets. Maybe, like, freeze bullets in an area or something like that. I don't really know, honestly. Not sure. <laughs> if I felt like it, I could make something that, like, expands outwards from Cerno and freezes bullets within a range, and that's actually not really that hard to do. I could do that. Yeah, maybe. That's pretty straightforward to do if I really want to. I already have code that kind of emulates that for, like, destroying bullets when boss says it's blue. But either way, let's see. What what do we want here, basically? I think maybe something interesting would be freezing bullets around the player periodically. So let's try something here. Let's try something here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so Cerno is always doing this attack. We're going to get rid of the pause. So Cerno is every frame is always doing that attack. Simple. And every so often, so we're going to set this up like this. If modulo self.pv attack timer. Let's see. Self.pv freeze. Frequency equals 120. Uh, so dot freeze frequency. Then self dot freeze bullets. And in addition, if module self dot pv attack timer plus 60. Self dot pv freeze frequency. Then add it to SFXQ freeze. Oh wait, sorry. Charge is the right name. Okay. So let's see how this changes. Load the pattern a bit. This doesn't do anything to make it so they, they only freeze near the player yet. But this is just going to change the tempo of the card considerably. Let's just start with this here and see how this goes. Just uh kind of type things wrong, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. oh I see. Bad. Of the things here. Try again. Okay. So she's going to keep on doing that. She's going to telegraph it like that. Now look, we have something that almost kind of feels like Donbaku here. But obviously it's a bit boring. It's still just spam, right? There isn't really anything cool going on here. Also, the bullets don't really look very frozen. Maybe we'll use plain bullets after all. I don't really know. But, so I think what I want to do... Now, this could be a hit on performance. I don't know. But let's see. And I think I have a I think I'll player distance, right? No, but I have point distance. Point distance, I think. Yes, I have point distance. Point distance. V dot X. V dot Y. Player dot X. Player dot Y. Is less than 200. Then we're just going to do that. So this is only going to freeze bullets near the player. Let's see this change. Check it out. So every, what is it, two seconds? Bullets do the player freeze. So this has like an interesting dynamic where you have to time things. So you don't run into bullets that freeze. Now is this fun or not? I don't really know. But I'm just kind of testing things out at this point really, if anything. You could even make it the opposite, where bullets that aren't near the player freeze. Whatever you want really. Now, how can we actually make this into something interesting?
So I already kind of have an idea here. So I think what I want to do, maybe, let's get rid of the rainbow gimmick. Banana. I'll keep that there in case we want it for later, though. Actually, I suppose what we could maybe do... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, let's say go through blue and black. Black is essentially white in this game, after all. So let's see. Um, I'm going to make these into diamond bullets. That might seem kind of reductive, considering what I said earlier, but you'll see. So, rather than being random, I want to add 180. For now, I just want to reverse them and have them go back towards Cerno. Theoretically, I'm not actually sure what I'll do with that yet. But when the bullets freeze, they're going to freeze for a second, then go back towards Cerno. Theoretically. Right now. So, essentially, they'll flip their sprite, so we won't really see the difference. That's the goal here. So. What I'm going to do is get rid of the random angle. And instead... Every time we do the attack, we will do this. We'll stop that PV, main angle. Maybe they should say diamond angle now. Don't worry about it yet. Plus, I don't know, let's say 15. It doesn't really matter too much. Actually, it has to be fairly tight. Let's make it 9. And I'm going to make this happen more often. I don't have... Oh. PV... Playing frequency. I like making these things into variables whenever possible, so it's easy to adapt them. Because, you know, I have to do four difficulties for every attack. So if I can just say up here what I want it to be, I can just change it up here instead of having to go down here and look for where it is. I know this is going to happen every five frames, every four frames, whatever we want, basically. I'm going to use plain speed, really. It's fine. Oh, these shouldn't have a random speed anymore. If I'm going to do this like this. So you're going to see an entirely different attack now. And it's actually going to be kind of interesting right off the bat with the potentially dodge. So it's not quite what I wanted. Um, so instead, by one. These are only going to move a little bit. These are going to be very dense lines. I might need to make them spawn more often. Maybe. So you, you can't dodge that. But what you could do... Oh, well, the fact that they're the wrong color means that doesn't really work out. Huh? Uh, so instead of sensing the color, let's check v dot action a type because we also set that from nil into speed. So that also works. Um, it is kind of a problem, though, honestly, having two different colors like that. Yeah, let's just... I guess for now... I feel like I need more colors. Italian today? I might do Linaco, I'm not sure. I have to have the energy for it. I might. I mean, now that you're up real, I could do JTD. The reason I didn't do JTD is because you were sleeping. Hmm. Interesting thought, right? What if? Let's see. So, yeah, you know, instead of cycling through this like this, let's just make these blue. Let's just make these blue for now. Let's not worry about that. So, we, we, we can check the color anyway. Nah, nah, we'll, we'll check the action type. Who cares? That's fine. We'll just check the action type. So, we'll have kind of an interesting the bullet like attack here. If I uh, remember how syntax works. Hold on. Uh, where did I mess something up? Uh, 35, 30, 36 unexpected symbol. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. So this is going to feel kind of like shoot the bullet. Like, pretend I'm the, the camera, except it's not working. Hold on. Oh. It needs to look for when they're not speed. Why did I close the game? Stop closing the game. How can I? Idiots. You make OBS capture to get every time, and it's so slow. Okay. Now pretend this is shoot the bullet, but we're the camera, and we automatically take pictures. Check this out. Isn't this kind of neat? We have to like dodge it going back in. Then it goes back out, I guess. I'm not really sure what it does there. I guess it just kind of goes off the screen, huh? Because, well, it's not like it's going to come back down at you. So at that point, well, it doesn't really work as a pattern, see? Just like this, obviously not. 
Also, why is it refreezing those ones? Didn't I just say to not do that? Oh, right, because... Okay, so the way it's coded is once it finishes doing its job, it sets it back to nil. So we do want to go off the color. If we add in black bullets somewhere else and we want to double check, we could say do black diamond bullets or whatever. We could check both. It doesn't really matter right now. It's not super important, honestly. So essentially, uh, this works. It makes something, but it's not really very interesting at all, is it? So let's, let's vary this up. Let's make these into pellets. And when we do the angle, we're going to do a little bit of random variance. Do random one, negative one. Just a little bit. Not much. Not much. And we're going to do this even more often. Because we want these to be impassable walls, pretty much. Just about. Maybe I'll just have these get slowed. I don't actually know. I'm not really sure where I still want to go with this. Yeah, I'm really just messing around. Usually I have more of an idea going into these cards. But I was afraid if I kept putting it off until I had an idea, I wouldn't want to stream it tonight. Um, so I'm seeing a couple of problems here. Hold on. Hey, my bullets no freeze. Oh, I should say. It isn't black, my bad. And B, uh, why bullets no have random angle? No, really. Why bullets no have random angle? That should theoretically be working, no? That's strange. Uh, let me just... I, I increased the number a little bit. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Weird. So, as it is now, you can kind of dodge through. Yeah, actually, this really doesn't work at all. Like, if anything, the bullets getting frozen hinders you more than helping you here. It really does. It's it's nasty, actually. So, I don't really think we want to do, like, the whole freeze bullets near the player thing. It doesn't feel very good, unless you design the whole thing around it, and I don't really have an idea for that. So, instead, why don't we do something like this? Um... <laughs> PV, green color. PV. Um, actually. Hmm. You do different bullet types, maybe. Nah. Actually. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Make both the bullets blue. This really shouldn't say plain anymore, but don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Diamond. What we're going to do here. Self dot. RNG random. 0, 1 equals 0. Then self dot. TV bullet type. Equals diamond. Else, I thought EV bullet type equals out. That should just be 50 50 if this works the way I think it does. So let's do this like this every time. Just so it looks a little bit more hectic. Let's do a random bullet type out of those two. This still works on non black bullets. What I'm going to do is have it so. Only the pellets freeze. Um, the other ones don't. And let's see, we still have... Okay, so I want that to still... I want to go back to a random angle. So let's see here. Actually, you know, you know what might be interesting? You know what might be interesting? Let's actually just have them spin a little bit, almost. Up to, I don't know, 45 degrees. That is the wrong variable. Uh, but, okay, there we go. 45 times after the delay of 60 frames. Okay, that should be correct then. Okay, so... We want to get rid of the player distance thing. We don't want that anymore. 
But whenever she freezes bullets, um, it's only going to freeze some of the bullets. It's going to just freeze the pellets, not the diamond ones. Maybe I should change the color to signify this. I don't know. Sinnoh doesn't really use many colors besides the rainbow that she might periodically use. Just didn't type the word and. I fixed it. <laughs> See, now we have something that kind of makes some sense, right? A little bit. Uh, we have way too much variance here. Uh, right. That's because I made it like that. Of course we do. Um, so also, something interesting I think I want to do. So, .pv. I'm just going to say, uh, so we're plain. let's replace this with, let's say, stream? Stream, sure. That's fine. Stream alternator equals one. Now, every time we do the freeze, self.pv stream alternator equals your sign like this. Now, alternatively, you could just do times negative one, but I like to use the function. It's, it's better to have, like, a function call here than, like, just throwing more, like, random multiplies and stuff in here, especially if I'm multiplying stuff elsewhere. It's just a bit easier for me to read. So the purpose of this is it's going to alternate between 1 and negative 1, so just negative positive, basically. So where we add the angle to the bullet every frame, I want to multiply it by this. So every other time we freeze bullets, they're going to go in the other direction instead. Let's see if this works properly. And I lowered the random spread of the bullets as well. Come on, OBS. You can do it, I promise. Okay, so there, there's still too much spread on the bullets here. You can barely tell that they're in lines to begin with. But the, the concept behind the card does work. It's maybe a bit too simple like this, but it does functionally work. So essentially, every freeze, the pellets exclusively freeze, and they either go 45 degrees one direction or the other direction over a short moment. It doesn't happen immediately. So, um, let's see here. Let me change this. So essentially, what I want to do here is, since like I said, it can be a bit hard um, so since this only does whole numbers, at least from what I recall, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So what I would essentially do is go through 0, 10, and divide the result by 10. So this is going to give us um, anywhere between... Actually, I'm going to do it like this. So this will give us up to 1 degree off. Actually, we don't even want that. We want to do 5. So this could go half a degree in either direction instead of a full degree. So this should be half as chaotic looking, theoretically, if I did that correctly. I think I did. I've done this a lot. It's pretty simple. Straightforward enough. Yep. It's a little bit better, right? So let me make this even better. So let's lower that by a bit more. So it's got less variance now. A little bit more. Working right, I think. Let's lower it even more. I believe this is working. I feel like it should still be... Hmm. Hold on. Let me just... Okay, so now, now it has no variance. It should be straight lines. No? Okay, hold on. Am I missing something somewhere? Uh, it was right there. Sorry, you can't see the code right now, but you're not really missing much. Oh, my bad. I... Such a fool. I still had the, the function that was setting every ring to random in there. I had that in there the whole time. Oops. Okay. Now it's gone. So here it is with just a little bit of random variance. So essentially, because it would look too non cernal like if we had it just be straight up, it works like this instead. Now one thing you'll notice about this is it can be pretty random, which bullet type you get so there can be big gaps or little gaps which could potentially be dangerous so maybe later i would want to tweak the rng here in such a way where it's a bit more 
guaranteed to be even, kind of like I did in the Patchly Evaporation card. But essentially, this it, it kind of works as a pattern. It's pretty fun to dodge. It's pretty simple. But it does actually work. And it feels somewhat on par for Cerno, I'd say. Kind of like what she do, right? I haven't even opened this tea. You pull the oats. So. What can we do to make this a bit more interesting? Now, right now, you might say, oh, that's way too hard for normal mode. And maybe it is. I'm not really thinking about the difficulty right now. I want to make it interesting and fun for me to play. And then I'll balance the difficulty after the fact, basically. So, I'm kind of thinking. Um, yeah, so it's, it's half a degree of variance right now. Let's do a little bit more. Let's do um, that much. So three quarters. No, rather, sorry. Almost three quarters. Seven tenths of a degree of variance. One way or the other. So 1.4 variance total that they'll have. So I think what I might do is instead of making the bullets all uniform go exactly 45, let's add in a bit more randomness again. RNG, random. Um, let's say negative 5 through 5. So this will mean it can go 40 to 50 degrees over that time. So rather than um, adding to the 1 here, adding to the amount that we increment or decrement by, we're adding to how many frames it's going to do it for. This is the duration of the action. So this should make it look a little bit more chaotic and certain. Yeah, you'll see some of them going for a bit longer than normal so you don't have all the bullets going in like a uniform group essentially as much i think we could go a bit further with that i think we could double that now this this is a variable i might want to like actually add up here so we can change it based on the difficulty for example in chen's like nikon mouse card um they have more variance per color increment per difficulty because, you know, if you're aiming all the bolts directly at the player, the player just has to sidestep the ball. If you add a 20 degree variance, you're going to have a big spray of bullets going at the player, which is what I want. So the mice kind of like head you off in a bunch of different directions like that. It's a lot more interesting to actually dodge. It's going to be frustrating if you do it wrong, though, for sure. So now it's to the point where like you, you can still see what the pattern's doing, but it's a bit more hectic to actually dodge it. There's a bit more moving around, maybe, because you don't always know exactly how the bullets are going to, to go. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if I really want to keep it like this, though. Because I'm almost thinking, okay, well, how would it be if we waited a bit longer between freezes? So, and again, you won't see this, but I'm just going to change the freeze frequency here to... Two and a half seconds instead of two seconds. I've just upped it by half a second, 30 frames. Because I want to see what happens if we let the bullets go a bit further out first and make it go up more. Let's go with three full seconds. So let's actually go three and a half seconds. So let's set that to 210 frames. Because I want the bullets to almost reach the bottom of the screen first. Then I want them to do the freeze and twist. Because we'll have more bullets to deal with then in the big group. And it means they're going to freeze closer to us, which I don't know if it's, it's a good thing or not yet. Maybe I'm thinking not, because like I said, having the bullets freeze near the player. Um, perfect freeze isn't a super card hard by any super hard card by any means. But one of the frustrating aspects of it can be learning Furnace freeze timing and making sure that you don't run into a bullet like that freezes right next to you. So I think, actually, by keeping the freeze timing, what we had before maybe might be good. We can eliminate the aspect of the frustration. So let's add even more random variance here. And I'm actually going to add this in. PP freeze variance equals 10. So we just slot this in here. Negative freeze variance, positive freeze variance. Divided by 10 because essentially what this is going to do is it's only going to vary up by I'm putting this at the wrong place aren't I 
Hold on. Uh, yes, I'm putting this at the wrong place. That should be here. My bad. Otherwise, it's going to affect the initial direction, not the later direction, which is what we actually care about. I open up a second copy of the game. Idiot. Idiot, idiot, idiot. There we go. So, there's a lot of bit more variants to make it a bit easier to control it. Very good, very good. Now, where should we really go from here? I like the concept that we have here. But I don't really know. So I'll probably want to add like one more layer of complexity to this card. Maybe something that's aimed directly at you so you have to do a little bit of streaming at the same time, honestly. Might be kind of nice to keep things varied and interesting. I do like that, like, the freezing bullets blend in so much, you can't even really, like, see them appear until they become black and stand out. Because, like, they're slightly different blue, but, like, a lot of them end up underneath the diamonds. So it almost looks like she's just spawning these, but, like, because of where they appear, you can tell what's going on. I think it works pretty well, actually, honestly. I do. So I think what I want to do, um... Right, so just let me hide the window for just a moment here. What I want to do... Uh, I'm looking for nil right here. So this is how it adds the speed. I want to add some variance here too. Um, so I think what I'll do... Straight up, I'll just copy this. And let's say divide by 2. So, if we have 10 degrees... If we have 10 frames of variance in either direction on the angle, we'll have 5 in either direction here. So this will generate between negative 10, positive 10, and then divide it by 2. So we'll get a variance of 5 in either way for the speed. So these bullets won't all have the same speed in the end now. Okay. So they're going to spread out and kind of like just make a little bit of a mist. Almost feels like more of a letty pattern in that sense, but I feel like there's still a good amount of Cerno here. If it were ready, she'd have like her cold vapor out and the bullets would do something when they pass through. So it's fine. So it can be a little bit tricky staying underneath her. But I think that's that's part of the challenge here, and I think it's interesting to do so. But you can see the gap variance can be problematic sometimes. So essentially what you'd want to do there is um you know, I actually have something I think I want to try. So I have... Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't showing that off. I forgot to actually show the window here. I'll show it off. So here's what it looks like with the speed variance added. See? See some of the bullets keep accelerating for a bit longer, a little bit less time. Simple. But it makes it a lot more interesting, I think. It's less of like dodging through two lines now and more like dodging through one line and a somewhat fine mist of pellets. Which I think fits Cerno a little bit better. So I think what I want to do... Oh god, I've already forgotten. <laughs> Hold on. Let me think in brain for a second. Um... Oh, right, yes, of course. Uh, regarding the randomness. So, self dot EV bullet type weight equals 50, let's say. So, it's my first time quite doing something like this, so bear with me here for a moment. This is very similar to what I did for uh, Flash Evaporation, where I did like the weighted bullet variants. So, essentially, what I'm going to do here is if self the rng random 0 through 100 is less than self dot pv bullet uh, type weight then we will make a diamond else we'll make a pellet now you might say hawk knight this is no different this is just a 50 50 and yes so far it is well, I have something else that I'm going to add here. So what we're going to do 
is if it's under 50 so if we get under 50 and we generate a diamond what we're going to do is self.pv bullets type weight equals itself plus five we're going to add to it and in the opposite case we're going to subtract from it so every time you get one bullet type it makes it more likely that the next bullet type will be the other kind of bullet so we should see less large gaps theoretically and more of an even spread now whether or not we want that no i i totally messed it up i totally messed it up apparently you know like i said theoreticals just, just theoreticals here so what's going on that this is wrong it's it's always getting into pellets so it's never under the weight oh i, I think i think these are backwards i think we need to do like this no? hold on let me try like this here we go here we go okay should be a bit more of an even spread potentially um it can only potentially do so many of one bullet type in a row before it gets to the point where it's guaranteed to have to be the other type no matter what and if i wanted to like change the weight between the bullets i could do that as well essentially all i'd have to do is make it so it adds a different amount so if we want more diamond bullets we make it add more every time we get a pellet so it pushes it more toward the other direction. So you can see now we have significantly more diamonds and significantly less pellets. By what kind of percentage, I have no idea, but essentially, yeah, it's it's like that now. So the card is a lot harder because you have less gaps to go through. Because the difficulty comes from, well, honestly, whichever bullet type you have more of, I guess. I mean, if you were to go in the opposite direction, it might get a bit harder too, but I think it's probably harder with more diamonds because they form tighter walls. Like, here it is with more pellets than diamonds. It's got a lot more random variants, but it's much more spread out. So it's a lot easier. There's less tight dodge. It's, yeah, there, there's more moving around and there's more reading ahead. But it's easier in general. Now, like, which way you want to go with the card, I guess, depends on how you want to design the card. You can even have it maybe shift back and forth. I don't really know. That might be interesting. No, I don't know. Hmm. And I wasn't streaming that the whole time. I See, here's why I was closing the game every time. Right? I just wish OBS didn't take five seconds to capture. I'm going to show this. So here it is with um the weight pushed in such a way where there's more pellets. Now you can actually see it. Someone please give me a heads up if I do that again. If people are just listening and not watching, that's perfectly fine, though. but if anyone notices me being an idiot, it, it point it out. Do like a shitty trial redeem and have Alice bang her head against the wall or something. Okay, anyway, yeah, you, you get the idea there. I'll just swap this back the other way so you can see the other way as well. So now it adds 15 to the weight of diamonds every time it makes a pellet. So it's far more likely to give you diamonds. I don't know how the percentage works out, and I don't care. I'm not good at that kind of thing. I'm just good at tweaking numbers until I like what I see. I'm not really good at anything here. No, I'm semi confident with diamond fruit patterns. I feel like I have a lot to learn in like making cool things, but I don't think every pattern needs to be like some super complex mega final boss card kind of thing. There's certainly room for some of those, even with the more basic characters, but I think you need to show a bit of restraint as well i think that's important so for now um let's say should I keep it even i think i want to weight it a bit toward the pellets i'm gonna go plus no rather i'm gonna go minus seven for every diamond so we're gonna do that for now and let's say that we're okay with how that is right now let me check some numbers. What's the um the speed of these guys? Stream speed is three. What's the speed of the pellets? Is it on average faster or slower? Um, it's right here. 30. So it starts off at the same minimum. Oh hey, I Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. All right. So it's actually the same by default. And then it 
goes up or down a little bit, which I think is fine. I think that's probably the best way of doing it. We could always make it so these bullets are always faster or always slower. But let's just try it just, just to see what it's like. So now rather than being the same speed and dipping in both directions, they're always going to um, be a bit slower or even. Let's just see how this looks. Out of curiosity here. So the pellet... Stream the window, how can I? So the pellet bullets will be slower now. Personally, I kind of liked it how it was before. Also, it feels a lot harder like this. Because there's more bullets, like, piling up at the same positions, I guess, huh? So now let's see what happens if we do it the other way. So now they're always going to be faster. Pellets will always be faster once they finish accelerating. Now this, this is also interesting, but this makes it less of a fine mist because the waves overlap with each other far less. So I think I like where we had it before where it's even, but with a bit of variance in, a, in either direction. I think it's probably for the best, honestly. I think so. Let's just look at that again. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. I do. I do, I do, I do. Ooh. I don't know about the density yet exactly. I don't know what difficulty I'm balancing for yet anyway. I'm just trying to make a pattern right now. I feel like this plays decently well. Decently. So, I want to... Add in a third aspect to this pattern. So I think what I'm going to do here. All right, I've already got it figured out. I already know it's what I'm going to do. OK. Let's take down the game for a bit, run some of the music while I make this. I know exactly what I want to do. So let's see here. Self.pv crystal quantity. Equals six. EV. Crystal angle. Crystal. Crystal. We can say offset. Crystal offset. Equals. How's that going to this? Let's start at zero. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I understand how I'll do this. EV. Crystal alternator. Just one. Stop that PV. Crystal speed. <coughs> Um, three, I guess. Okay, I think that's the basics of what we're going to need for this. So let's see here. We're doing this attack less often, so we'll use a more noticeable sound effect for it. Well, it's spawn not large. What we're going to do here a bit more complex. Or I equals two, do, or k equals one soft.pv crystal quantity u. So this is going to be a lot more difficult to write. I'm just going to put in the alternator code as well real quick. Copy and paste it up and find it. Oh yeah, it's all the way down there. I forgot. Okay. Crystal alternator, saving a bit of time here. Probably not really, but trying. We'll be doing this whole attack twice, and that's for good reason. I don't want to put the alternator before or after. Um, probably after. We'll probably do it here instead of after every single bolt. We'll do it once after every wave. So that's what we're going to do here. It's something a little bit like Icicle Fall. A little bit, kind of. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to go with it yet, but I have one idea, and if that doesn't work, I have a second idea. I'm probably going to go with the first one. I'm going to try the first one at first, at least. So, complex, bullet. I think we can just do a single layered complex bullet. Uh, what are those bullets named? Prism, I think, instead of crystal, right? Maybe? I haven't used them yet. Prism, yes, okay. We're going to call them crystals in this card, even though they're called prisms internally. I don't really care. 
Uh, blue prisms. Uh, we might make these a different color to make them stand out. I don't know. I might have to add another blue to the sheet or something to help with that. We'll see. So I've got X, so I've got Y. Sometimes you don't want all the bolts to spawn on the boss. That can kind of be boring, but um, in this case, it might be best that way. If anything, I might have the other bullets spawn a bit away from CERN on a ring, but I feel like for now it's it's okay like this. It probably is. We'll see. We'll see. X soft dot Y. Um soft dot PV crystal angle. Plus soft dot PV. Crystal offset. Line soft dot PV. Crystal alternator. You'll see why in a second. You'll see why we're alternating like this shortly. Dot.pv, crystal speed, plus uh, a minus one in parentheses time, sub.pv, crystal speed increase, which we need to add as a variable as well. I'm going to say that's one for right now. So. Essentially what this does is for every crystal, it's going to go a little bit faster than the last one. Um, let's put these, I haven't actually done anything with the depth by the way yet. Uh, we'll just make these one layer higher. Let's put them on three actually, in case we do something else with the others after. In case we want to move one of them up or something. I'm not really sure. Okay, anyway, let's see. I think actually, hold on. I, I want to do something real quick. Um, self dot bullet. Uh, actually, no, we can say it's stream. Self dot stream. I guess we could name these to stream type. Yeah. Let's just do this. I'll do it down there. Moment two. V stream depth equals for diamond self dot stream. V stream depth equals two. Make them on top. Pellets on the bottom. Stream type. Stream type weight. Stream type weight. Copy this around a little bit more as well. Stream type is right here. And stream depth has to go right here. Okay. Pellets will always be underneath now. If that makes it too hard to read, we'll reverse it. We'll see. But I want to see how this looks basically. It might be a little bit better. Not sure. It wasn't bad before, so I might revert this. Anyway, these guys will be on top. They're going to be on three. Player three, depth-wise. Okay, now it gets a bit tricky. So, speed. Essentially, what we want here is I want... I don't, I don't know if I want to spoil what this is. Maybe I'll just code it myself and... Get it sorted, but that relies on me getting it right the first time. Oh, that's tough. It's a big ask, let me tell you. Let's see. Hmm. Let's get my brain functioning here, please. Hold on. <coughs> Might need more coffee as lubricants. I'm not sure. Considering how long I've been going, I wouldn't count on me playing anything else after this. Probably no Mineko or JTD. Maybe tomorrow. Hmm. So essentially... Yeah, we want minus speed. Is it minus 0.1? With that, and... The amount of times is going to vary. Um, no delay. So essentially what we're doing here is... Okay. I guess it's actually pretty simple, isn't it? Hold on, this one, one, yeah. We can actually copy this. And just say divided by 10, right? Well, that'll do it in 10 frames, which isn't what we want. We want to do it. Wait, no. This is the number of times. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Hold on. Now we need to do the amount, right? 
Well, it's more consistent if we do this considering number precision, I suppose. Oh wait, no, this doesn't need to be divided by 10. This needs to be... So right now, that equals the speed times 10, times 10. Okay, I, I think that works. I think that actually works. Now... Okay, the angle is initially zero, right? Crystal... I don't even have crystal angle up here. Pocket eye, what are you doing? Let's go to error. Okay. Um, and we need to change that here. That's 180. I think this functions in that sense. Uh, no. Table dot insert pb crystal table. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. A lot of arguments here. This is only a bullet with one complex action too. All right. Uh, I like putting this at the top when I can. Actually, I'm just gonna say stream. Stream bullets. Stream. Stream bullets. In the instances, stream. Probably a bad idea, but I'm doing it anyway. Crystals. Crystal. This is just like the syntax I've used in others, basically. I'll go with that. There. Yeah, right there too. Okay. It's a table. So, every so often, when we do this, I mean, I need to make it so she actually does this too periodically. It's, I'm going to try to program this entire thing right now, then I'll show you what it looks like and write a Kanako that it works right the first time, but it probably won't. Let's see. I don't know how frequently I want to do this. I feel like if I do it every wave of the freeze, it might be a bit too much, but I'm going to start off like that anyway. I'm just going to see how it goes, basically. Actually, no. I know what's optimal we'll do. I'm going to do opposing. PB. Timer. PB. Okay, rather. This might actually be. Right. Okay. Well, you know what? Okay, hold on. do this is all right i get it i don't have to add anything new please you can see and not it's two then oh god two if this if not that one and yes this one then redirect results okay self dot pv no self dot redirect crystals equals function or kv in pairs self dot pv crystals do v dot angle equals Player angle v dot x v dot y is that gets the angle to the player from the coordinates that you provide. It's just a nice shortcut. Um, yeah, speed equals three. Now we want to make sure that this doesn't repeatedly trigger on bullets we've already redirected. So the way we can check for that. There's a few ways. I could probably use the action stuff as like a check for it. So what I can do... I mean, I could always just set something on it too, I suppose, as like a marker. The easiest... Oh no, that, that's potentially exploitable if circumstances get right. Uh, okay. 
Okay, let's just do something like this. B dot action B. Oh no, action A. B acts. Equals negative one. If e dot action a and p max isn't negative one, then we do this. This is essentially just setting a flag saying, hey, we've already done it to this bullet. It's a bit hacky, but I don't really want to add extra stuff under the bullets. So it'll it'll do. Assuming it do. If it do, it do. You know, if it don't, it don't. We fix it. Okay. Put the window back up. Let's see if this works. Kind of like I want it to. Chances are probably not. Okay, it loads. That, that, that's a good sign. Ooh, nice. And yet again, I wrote SFQQ. Good job. Instead of SFXQ. Not the first time. That's a typo that's been there for like 10 minutes that I didn't notice. Oops. My bad on that. Okay. Let's try this again. Round two. Complex. What do you mean complex bolt doesn't exist? Oh, I bet I didn't write complex bolt dot new. Yeah, right. Complex bolt two complex bolt. Yeah, that needs to be dot new. My bad. Okay. Round three. Never said I was good at this. Okay. It's capturing. All right. Let's check this out. Oh. Well, they're not doing what they're supposed to. It's cool. Uh, but this is the right general idea. Yes, it is. Good. Okay, let's go back to the menu. Wait for a second, go back to the code. I'm calling freeze bullets. It's supposed to be at least. Or rather, redirect crystals. Uh, I think maybe it's not working. Oh, right. So. Oh. Right, my bad. Okay. Okay, fixed, I think, theoretically. So it's going to send those out. Now they're going to redirect with the player. She's going to send out more and redirect them with the player. Check that out. The force is a bit more movement from the player. So what I want to do here. Oh, I did forget it. Thank you, Zelda fan. Hold on. Also. Good evening. It's okay, I'm gonna show it off again after I add a sound effect to it. Add to SFXQ, not SFQQ. Uh, bullet spawn prey. It's a bad name, but it's what it's currently called. It's the ding that you hear when bullets change direction. Alright. Check this out. So she makes some crystals up there. You a bit small, maybe. They redirect for the player. Every other freeze, she makes crystals, and every other freeze, she redirects crystals. They're kind of like fairy wings. Now, I'm not quite done with this. Um, not yet. I mean, for one, they're a little bit hard to see, maybe, right? I haven't used these bullets yet, really. I don't know, they, they might be fine. I mean, like, you kind of want to stream them in advance anyway, right? So let's make a couple changes here. Um, there's actually a variable I haven't even used yet here. You might have noticed if you're paying attention that I made crystal offset. So I think what I want to do essentially. Hmm. That might be a bit too tricky if I do it like that. Alright, you know, I, I actually think I. I don't want to aim them toward the player. I want to do something else, something different. So speed increase 1.5. I want there to be a bit more distance between them, for one. Also, I might make these potato bullets instead of crystals. I think for now I'm going to. Uh, let's see. Let's make them into that. Also, don't mind the fact that like these things suddenly change direction. It's fine for this kind of thing. Zen did it for ice school fall, so I can do it here. It's okay. So what I want to do instead of aiming at the player. I want to aim downwards, so 270 plus the RNG, random, uh, let's say minus uh, 8 plus 8, 
we'll we'll do a variable for this. Soft dot G crystal um random variance. Oh, I can't computer. What are computers even anyway? Okay. So that all seems to work how it's supposed to. However, I'm not quite done yet. What I want to do here is crystal offset. This should already function. I think. Odds are it might not function. I think. Let's move it all. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Might this. It's interesting. How how does that how does that work? Oh right. Yeah. Okay. It's it's either. Okay. It's either gonna work or go backwards to start with, and I'll have to adjust it the other way. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um. So, every time we do the attack, if self.pv crystal offset self.pv crystal offset max. Then self.pv crystal offset equal self.pv crystal offset plus five. Let's say we're gonna hard cut the five. I don't care. That's fine. Else self.pv crystal offset equals zero. So let's just code this in real quick too. Let's say this is 30. Whatever. That's fine. That's okay. Okay, let's see if this works. I have to show the window. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna go invincible here too, don't mind me. Good, okay, now the next one. Okay, it, it goes reverse. I have to fix this, hold on. Also, I need to make it go up by more. Uh, stop that P crystal offset change equals 10. I'll make a variable for this after all. So far, with the five. I've already had to change it once, I'd play as well, huh? Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I'm gonna set that to ten. Good. Okay. All right. Oh, and hold on, actually, because it needs to go the other way. And sorry, yeah, you can't see the window. You're not missing anything. Give me a second. I think if I just start this at negative one instead, it should work. Okay. Now, essentially, this is like fairy wings, kind of like going down. Yep, now they go down a bit. They kind of leave the screen. I'll have to fix that. Going a bit too fast, I guess. I see why. So you kind of see what I'm going for with this. I go vulnerable again. I don't know how well this plays yet. That's not really at the top of my priority list yet. So she's got like flat waves and then like the curved waves that like go down kind of like wings. See? Nifty. I like what I've done with it. Yeah, I, I like the concept. Conceptually, I like the concept, maybe. Uh, let's see. So what I essentially want to do is make it so it decelerates faster. So let me just do that real quick here. So let me see where I do that here. Uh, so like this. I'll essentially do... I mean, as long as the... Speed increase is always an even amount. That's fine. We'll make it 1.6 instead. I can make it 2. Maybe. That's fine, maybe. And so we're going to say that's 2 plus 5? Mm. I hope that's correct. I'm bad at maths. Yeah, I'm, I'm so so. It depends on the math. Okay, perfect. I got it. Nice. Good. Very good. Now, if, if anything, like, the only downside is it doesn't look very wing-like, does it? It's because, like, every wave is so, like, spread out. And also, I feel like maybe... I spread out, I mean, like, time-wise, by the way. I feel like there needs to be... Bit of random variance to the angle they're fired at, only a little bit. 
They look too uniform for Cerno. Maybe. <laughs> what I kind of want to do here... Okay. I know exactly what I'll do. I understand what I'll do. I got it. Okay. I got it. Did it work? Hold on a second here. And I fix this up. So, in the form logic and the routine here, we always want to call both of these, except in one very specific case. So, essentially, every time we freeze bullets, we're also calling these. Um, let's see. Actually, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because the table is empty. Yeah, it should theoretically be fine. We can do it either way. So, when we do the attack 2, what I want to do here is essentially... Mm, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Do I have anything in here that I can use as a signal? Not really, so that's fine. Hold on. No, instead of no, whatever. And ref equals the bullets. So ref, this way we can add something. And ref dot. Which we add it first. I don't think it really matters either way. But just to maybe make this a bit more readable. Maybe not. I don't know. And ref dot crystal indicator. Equals self.pb crystal offset. So essentially, I can mark which wave of crystals is which wave, which wave of crystals now. So, what I want to do here is a little bit complex to explain, but you'll see. Also, I'll add in the random variance now, too. Uh, where's the angle? Okay, here it's all this stuff. Yep, plus RNG, random. Yeah, let's see. Negative one. What kind of language is this? Uh, this is Love2D, which is a Lua library. Uh, sorry, framework, I think is the right term. So if you've seen Lua before, which is used in like Roblox and a lot of other things, uh, it's the same thing. It's with a lot of like shortcuts that make it easier to do games in. But the actual Don Mako engine is still mine. I'll show off the engine itself in a second. Like, can't see any patterns right now, but I'm just working on putting the finishing touches on something, kind of. Uh, okay, so that's good. We are crystals. What we need to do... Yeah, all the engine plugins are innuendos. Uh, you know about the Hadron Collider? I use um, a collision shortcut engine called the Hardon Collider. Yep. Real knows what he's talking about there. <laughs> This part's going to be a bit hard, so what we need to do essentially is if v dot stream indicator equals self dot actually since I since I set the offset to increase there, this actually might be easier than I thought. Now I still need to do minus five though. Oh, but that should... Oh, okay, okay, I know. I know what I can do. And indicator equals zero. No, rather, let's do this. If equals negative five, then set the PB. It's the offset equals... So is it equal to... Okay. Equals... Okay. So we're going to use, oops, 10. Indicator here. Um, stream indicator. Yep, okay. If we equals. Temp indicator. So essentially this is seeing which wave the crystals are from. So what I want to do is fire at a wave 
Then on the second wave, I'm firing out a second wave and moving the first wave. So I always move the previous wave. Let me see if I have this set up correctly. No, apparently not. <laughs> Hold on. Um, oh, I just missed an equals, my bad. Alright, let's see this. Let's see if this works or if it's just totally broken. No, it sure isn't firing anything. Like, rather it's firing, but it's not moving the waves down like it should be. Uh, but it does cycle properly, which is nice. So that that's good. We're kind of getting there, huh? Okay, so redirect crystals is still being called. Good, should be. It's gonna go back to the code here. Uh, indicator crystal offset, which yep gets increased by five every time we do that. We check through the crystals. If you don't stream indicator, that's not what I call the variable apparently. Um, oh, it's crystal indicator. My bad. No wonder. Okay. Uh, so this might be correct. The logic might be sound. I think it was just referring to the wrong variable. It's gonna go invincible here. No. Just wanna watch this cycle. Hold on. Hmm? I mean, it's working, but it's working wrong. Okay, hold on. I think I see the problem. Minus five, I think? Hold on, is, is that correct? Is it plus five? Hold on, I'm bad at thinking sometimes. I just have to try things. No, bad. Not like that. Uh, plus five. Is plus five right? I don't think that's right. No, no, it's, it's definitely not right. There's also, it can go like over the limit that way. Can I be minus five? Oh, sh should I be checking here? I think I should be checking there, maybe. So set it correct, and if it's... Well, no, because the temp indicator... Why am I checking to see if the temp indicator is minus five if I'm not doing anything to it? Okay, so let's, let's talk about this. So the first wave... Um, the crystal offset is zero, so these crystal indicator, the crystal indicator on the first wave is set to zero. So on the second wave, we essentially want to check, so that for the second wave, for the second time, okay, should be minus 10, because of how this works. So it gets increased here to five, wave two is made with a crystal indicator of five. This is set up to 10, and it doesn't... We don't really need to factor in like the first go of reader crystals yet. Because that doesn't really matter. So for the second go, we want to look at minus 10, essentially. Because that's the difference that we're looking at here. So we want to say minus 10. So we do need to factor in. We essentially need to make it wrap around. If it's minus 10, like if we're working with zero then, then we need to essentially correct it and wrap it around here. This probably isn't the best way to do it, but I don't really care. It's fine. Um, so we need to say in that case, crystal max minus five, I believe. Else if temp indicator equals negative five. Exactly. Okay. Now, I don't know if that's correct or not. That might be off by a bit. Why am I trying to... Of course I'm trying to boot the game again. I don't have the game up. Duh. That's why I'm trying to do it. Okay, let's let's see now. Let's try this now. I'm going to turn it in, so I'll just watch this. What the hell are the bullets doing? Okay. Uh, nope. They are immediately popping when they shouldn't be yet. So... Essentially... It's still off by a bit. That's strange. So, it's equaling them? That doesn't make sense, does it? Offset minus 10. Offset, I think it's added to once. So, even on the very first wave, that. Let's watch this again. Let me just make sure here. So, you can't see this. You, it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. Weird. Okay. 
So the crystal offset starts at zero. Yep, it gets set onto the bullets as crystal indicator. It gets added to the crystal. Oh, my bad. I forgot. It changes by 10 now, not five. Um, this needs to be used down here. Yeah. Uh, that might theoretically work out mathematically. Let's see. I'm not sure. Let's watch. No. What? Still? Still? Now what am I doing? Um. Okay, so. The first time, it's setting them as zero. Then it ups the crystal offset. Okay, right. We don't want to... Yeah, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't want to check that one. We want to check essentially the previous one. So, do, could we do this like this? Minus times two? Is that right? No. Also, what, why did it go up by so much? That's clearly not going up by ten there. Oh, sorry, you didn't see it. Yeah, you didn't see anything too much. You missed anything too much. Hold on. What's going on? Is it change? It's fine that that's 10, yeah. Is this changing anywhere else? No, nothing else modifies crystal offset change. Hmm. 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 Okay. I'm dying, Squirtle. I'm dying. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Hold on. I might need to just rewrite this from scratch real quick. This, this like, section with this cycle indicator thing. So our possible values are 0, 10, 30, and 40. So we have, like, a 5 cycle there, essentially. As we start here, we go up to max. If it senses that it's not under the max, when it tries to increase it, so if it's 40, it's going to loop around it to 0. Essentially, when it increments it, um, wherever it does that, which is right here. Mm -hmm. But curiously enough, um, I just want to get rid of this real quick. Um, I'm just um, essentially knowing this out so it doesn't do anything real quick without rewriting everything, though. I just want to see it spawn the bullets. I don't want to do anything special with them yet. I I want to make sure everything's okay because it was really strange how it was moving them too far during one of those steps. We should see five different states. Zero. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. And then forty degrees, and now it loops back around. Correct. Okay, good. All right. So, all right. Why then, when we activate this, when we turn this back on, why is it wrong? So, 10. Really skips to maybe 30 or so, then to 40. Back to 10. I feel like something is maybe... I, I don't even know, actually. That's so strange, right? I... I don't think it's even that. It's not even this, right? Like, that's weird. If I toggle if I comment that out, and like these two, it's not even repeat max. I just want to comment this out. It should work now. So there's something in there that's breaking it, right? Oh no! Oh, fascinating. Okay. Well, how's that the case? So it's nothing to do with passing this check or not. Oh, 
Oops, I see the problem. That should be temp indicator. Not crystal offset. I don't want to change the crystal offset here. I want to change the temp indicator. My bad. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see how this works. It works. Watch this all the way through. It might not work in loops. It doesn't quite work in loops now. But otherwise it works perfectly. So nice. Okay. You can see what I'm trying to accomplish here now, I hope. Um, so if it... Well, it's never going to be that. It's going to be... Like this, maybe? I might have those backwards. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me check this. Nope, oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. Okay, I think I know why. Yeah. Right? Like this, maybe? Hold on. I'll try this. Ding. Oh, okay, hold on. I think I have that backwards. It's weird because one of them's working. Hold on. Let's look at this here. So if it's so if we're minusing two, so if it's zero, we want it to be. Ugh. Oh. No, because sometimes it needs to be offset max too. Well, which, 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 which one is working? This one or are both not working? Okay, hold on. All right, so if temp offset is zero when coming into this. Why is Yami the player character? Uh, because she's the leftover from my previous game, uh, Exiled Infector, which was for a game gym. So she's just like the character spread I had lying around. This is all piggybacked off the code base of Exiled Infector, but heavily modified to be not as garbage. <laughs> Exiled Infector was largely made in a week after all, so there were a lot of um, shortcuts taken. For sure. You know, hold on, I'm just gonna go use the bathroom real quick and I'll be right back. I just, I, I need to refactor this a little bit. I'll be right back. Hold on.
this little gremlin here jumped off the back well off the side of the bathtub on top of the toilet like back thing to get my attention slipped off fell into the trash can knocked over the trash can she's a little pest she's the kind of cat who will like stand on her hind legs and like go like this to get your attention and if she's like here on my desk or on my lap she'll actually like look me in the eye and do this to like show me where she wants to be pet She's so stupid yet so smart, and I forgot my water bottle. Hold on. I'll admit, it's much better to have her fall into the trash can than it is into the toilet. I think I've ever actually had that happen, thank goodness. I've had cats fall into a bathtub full of water though. That's for sure, including her. She's gotten very wet before. So. Um... Alright, let's say we've done a full loop. Right now, uh, Crystal offset his loop back to zero. So it's off of a fresh go. The temp indicator will be negative 20. So if we want, so let's say it's, it's negative 20, which is here. I want it to be crystal offset max. Let's say it's minus, maybe. Okay, I understand. Okay, I think I got it. Just had to run through it in my head real quick there. I think with that, I, I think it'll work. I think it'll work now. Let's watch this. Not play it yet. Let's just watch it. I think I have the math correct. No, oh, no, no, I don't. Only two cases we have to account for here. How am I not getting this? Got both of those wrong. Right, because it needs to indicate the, the previous one. Hold on. Okay. So when this comes through as zero, it means that this actually got set as 40 because this gets set after the fact here which is fine i could change that if i want but it's okay like this so this gets set to 40. this thing is told the current offset is zero so we want it to affect 30 not 40 in this case so we want this to be offset max minus the offset change and in this case that it comes through um do it do do i add 10 to this do I add zero yeah i zero yeah mm, no i okay hold on i i think this one will work i think this one might work now in case that it comes through is zero, it's actually 40, so in case that it comes through is 10, it's actually zero. Well, we don't care. 10 minus 10. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, hold on. This might work. I have a hard time wrapping my head around this kind of thing. I, okay, that one didn't work. Okay, hold on. I, I want to watch the others. Neither of them work. Oh, okay. Hold on. All right. Sorry, I, I didn't turn on the stream. That you it, it just broke again. That's fine. Um. All right. I know what I'm gonna do. I am going to change if I do this a little bit. I'm going to add to it beforehand instead. I'm just going to set the angle to negative five to start with for the very first cycle. So. Okay. I want to see how this affects things. This will throw off the timing by a bit. I only have to minus it by one set instead of by two, essentially. We minus it by one here. These are totally wrong now. I want to just account for the regular cases first. Then we'll account for the weird wraparound cases, which should be a bit simpler now, I think. 
Is that going different angles? Uh, eh? What? Huh? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Never mind what I just did. I'm totally reverting it. No, I'm not doing what I just did. I don't want to have to fix whatever that is I just caused. Okay, okay, I've reverted back. I'll figure this out instead. Okay, so. I'm gonna go through this here. If this... If, when it reaches here... Okay, I'm, I'm going to go one at a time here. There's two cases we need to account for. Because we have 10 here as the offset and whatnot. But it doesn't really matter what the offset is. Because we factor it in with the variable, so... In the case, okay, hold on. I, I want to see if this one works so far. We're going to have either one bad case or two bad cases here. We're going to have at least one minimum. And I want to watch for that. Just like watching for OBS to capture the damn window. I think it's a love 2D thing. It's kind of slow with a lot of games. Okay, so the fourth case, I think. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, all right. One of the cases works. The The case that we have here, coded in right now, works. So, else if indicator equals something, then temp indicator equals something. Again. Okay. So, leave that one alone. It works. It works perfectly fine. Instead, if temp indicator equals, you know, I think we actually want to check to see if it equals the offset max, right? And equals, no, no, oh my god, I hate this. I hate what I've set up here. Which, which is like the, the bad one? Is it the last one? Whoa. Yeah, I think it was the last one. So what would the temp, what would he passed in here on the last one? So the actual bullet gets 40. So then this resets back to zero. It's to, well, I know it's not negative 20 because that that's this one. Okay, hold on. I, I need to, I need to see which instance was failing here. I need to see if it's the last one or then it's the last one. Hold on. Once this works, by the way, I can scale it up or down or however I want. Okay, that works. 30 degrees works. Whatever degrees. Okay, the last one fails. The last one fails. That's 10. This is 20. This is 30. And then 40 fails. Okay, okay. All right. As I thought. As I thought. Good. Okay. Back here. So, in the case that the actual angle is 40. Then up ahead here, it's going to be reset to zero. So that means zero essentially gets passed into here. We're just going to say passed, even though there's nothing passed into this. It's what it picks up on. Also, there should be a local variable. So in that case, it gets to be negative 20. Yeah, that, that one works, which is the weird thing. It leads me to think I'm insane. It's offset change. Wait. Oh. Well. <clears throat> eh. What do you... I, I don't understand. Temp indicator. Yeah. That, that should be the conditions for the one I already have, though. Okay, well, let's just try some things. I think it might be this and as we we know it should be equal in crystal max at the end we want to set it to crystal max right so logically if we're um adding 10 to this we add 10 to this one probably right which is essentially what i'm doing here <clears throat> i feel like this might work it's actually i don't exactly have a formula in my head here
Okay, it works. Nice. Okay. We have ourselves <clears throat> a pattern, maybe. Okay. Now, how does this fuel deploy? That's pretty important too, right? I might not want to use the potatoes because they're massive. I'm not really sure yet, honestly. But I want to see. I feel like it feels fine. Okay, so let's actually shoot Cerno now. And it knocks the health or anything out, obviously. Fine. I don't feel like it's ever blowing me off in particular. <clears throat> Interesting. I feel like it's fine. I'd kind of rather that, like, the, the bullets not bunch up as much here, though. Um, but I don't really know or feel like doing the math like get them to space out more I, I guess I could figure that out but I don't really want to um maybe what I'll do no that, that, that would re play a restructure I think if I did that hmm. I just want to try something hold on um, those, no, uh, here, negative, just off the max, does this work? I don't think that works. I just want to see if I could make it so, like, the wings go up and down in a cycle like that, but I don't think it's going to be as simple as just changing this, so I'm not really fixated on that, probably. Actually, I, I know exactly how I could do that without, without even thinking about this. It's actually really easy. If this doesn't work, I know how I'll do it. It, it, it actually works. That's funny. Wait, no, it, it doesn't work. Anyway, uh, I don't need to do it like that. That's totally unnecessary. Because what I can just do... Is, um, just do... Minus uh, um, self dot pv crystal offset max divided by two. Easy, right? Wait, no, I, I don't do that. There, stop that. That is not where that goes. Um, also, it needs to be hit by the alternator, too. Um, let's see. So, this is made here. Mm. No, we don't want to change it by that, do we? Hold on. I must ponder. No, doing it like that wouldn't work. We can't do that without tracking how many lines there are individually. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I could just apply, like, a fixed thing to it, I suppose. Oh, actually, no, I... No, I can use offset max, right? Offset max is... An offset, not a fixed variable, so yeah, I, I can use that. What am I saying? Of course. Yeah, that's actually fine. Okay. Alright, um... So... Oh my god, there's too many variables here. Um, I think this needs to go on the end like this. Minus, whoa, self dot pb crystal, oh, crystal offset max times self dot pb crystal alternator. I know I'm putting this in here twice. I, I think this might be correct. I might need to say negative crystal alternator. I'm not sure yet. Let me just try. <clears throat> Let's see what we get. 
It's actually gonna be too much, but that's fine. Used to work. So, it's gonna stop at zero now instead, and it's gonna look back. Obviously, that's not what we want. So, this needs to be divided by two. Let's put that into parentheses here. Okay. Now we should be good to go. Okay, cool. Wonderful. I think this is correct. So this is going to start up above Cerno by a little bit. We go down. Once, once it hits down past a certain point, it'll go back up to the top. It's kind of like wings, right? Kind of. Nice. Here he goes. Okay. It functions. It's a miracle. I need to add gold effects to this. Uh, so let's see right here. I don't really need any others, honestly. That's probably enough. Okay. So. Everything functions how I want it to. Is this fun as a card? This is probably around hard difficulty now. I haven't balanced it yet. I want to actually just play this for a bit. Let's see how I feel on it, basically. I don't know if it's missing anything or not yet. There are some hard dodges. But if you can, like, look up ahead to see where the, the potatoes end up being, that can help out a lot. The problem is that, yeah, they do, like, gather near her a lot due to how the math works out on the deceleration. The deceleration? Deceleration is not even a word. I get why that is. I think, yeah... Hmm. You know, and since- oh. Right, I- have such an easy way of doing this. Why didn't I do this before? I- I think this would work, right? Yeah, I- I think I can sort this out actually, yeah, hold on. Um... Where are the potatoes? Here are the potatoes. Um, speed? No. Let me check something here. That's it's the only one yet. Okay. Um, I have a thing that just says stop. I believe on these bullets as a function for actions. It's down to the bottom here. Um yep. Speed equals zero. Good. Okay. So let's see. So if we were to do zero 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 sixty. It's going to stop them all at the same time, but that's actually not what we want, right? I think we want to make it so... Uh, the further ones go for less time and the close ones go for a bit longer? Not exactly sure. I just want to check this first. I don't mind if they stop and don't, like, decelerate slowly. Oh, jeez. Okay, that actually does make it so they're really spaced. Okay, hold on. Okay, um... I need to stop closing the game when I do that. Uh, where's the speed here? Crystal speed. Speed increase needs to be less. One. And lower crystal speed to two to start with. Okay. Maybe that'll do. Unsure, really. Unsure. Let's check and see. I'll capture it a second, I'm sure. Okay, now they're evenly spaced, too. That means there aren't really any in the middle, which is the downside, I guess. So, how do I want to rectify that? Do I want to say this is just how the card is, and if you dodge in the middle, you have an easier time? And that's why you, like, want to avoid letting the bullet push you outwards? Do I want to increase the horizontal variance of their angle, so they might pop in the middle more often? They want to make it so certain it's firing something in the middle, so it's kind of like the cliche non spells. I've already coded once before, by the way. For fun. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I want to handle this exactly. I 
I mean, if I were to just make like one more bullet there and lower like, I suppose that would work too. Lower the speed down to one. Up the quantity, why not? We can go out further with it. And actually, I think I'm going to make a bit more speed in between so they get a bit more spaced out. Just a little bit. Let's watch this. Okay, so that deals with the problem of not having any in the middle. An easy fix, really. So they're more spread out now. Um, but they need to be spread out. Oops. That was the wrong thing. I wanted to put the variants. You increase them there. Don't worry, Mitch. You can't see the code. You're not missing much. Okay, so I want them to go about to the edge of the screen here. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's, that's basically correct. Good. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. Okay. So are these okay as potato bullets? I feel like... Yeah, probably. Hmm. You don't really get much of a feel for, like, the fairy wings like this. Unfortunately. I'm just thinking, like... I don't want to use, like, knives, right? Cerno wouldn't use knives. Um, can't use the pre-existing bullet types. I mean, I could just use, like, a round bullet. I, I like the idea of, like, it being an actual bullet, like, with a direction to it, though. But it basically leaves, like, the potatoes, maybe the, maybe the crystals. The crystals are so small. I feel like we don't want, like, another small bullet type, even though these are a little bit larger. They're basically the same size as the diamonds. Give or take a few pixels, I think. So it doesn't really leave any options. Yeah, really, the only thing that works here, honestly... Arrowheads, no, I don't really want to use arrowheads for. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep the potatoes, then. I think maybe what I'll do... Hmm... I'll lower the stream quantity a bit. What I might do, let's see. So let me get over here. Is do this more often. Now this is going to radically shift the difficulty of the card. So I don't know for sure how this is going to go yet. We'll see. But I want to check. I want to see how this feels. Uh, it sure is not working anymore. Why is that? Is it... Because I changed the variance or because I changed something else? Like because I changed the, the timing? Hi. Hold on. Why, why did that make that not work anymore? So why did changing... How frequently it happens matter? I mean, one thing, it's obviously messing with the timing of that, I suppose. Um, what I would want to do is put it down here. Because we want the, bolt, the freeze bolts thing to still be happening at the same time. So here's essentially the code that I just had. This doesn't work, though. Why is it that this doesn't work? All the crystal bolts are only ever modified here. This doesn't call to like anything like the stream um, stuff. These bolts doesn't matter. Yeah, this doesn't seem to work. Why is that? I'm just going to try it again real quick. That's all. Don't mind me. Let's see. Oh, it's just not making them move, but it is working otherwise. Why is that? Why is it doing one thing but not the other? What did I mess up? Um, so when it's changing the angle, which it is successfully doing... Hold on. It's doing here, if you just speed equals three. Oh, is... Hmm, okay. 
because it's happening so quickly it's happening right when stop happens i'll just call stop well let's just get rid of it if you do action a type equals no simple okay that'll do oh, okay with this they don't need to like sit there and wait basically yeah here we go check that out nice So, I lowered the amount of the diamond and all bolts a bit to compensate for the fact that there's a lot more of these now. I have to make sure this is actually fun and fair. It seems fine so far. I can dodge this okay. This is probably around hard mode difficulty still, I would estimate. Definitely not lunatic, but definitely not normal either. Unless we're talking like late game normal, which I generally don't. This helps with the flavor of the card by a bit. I don't know how much it matters. You know what I think these need? Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I wasn't showing it. Um, I want to change one more thing anyway. Give me a second. <laughs> My bad. I'm really bad at that. Um, a little bit of speed variance here. Only a little bit. Only a little bit. Really? This maybe. Oops. Maybe 10. Okay. Yeah, let me get the backup. I think it looks old and feels a little bit too boring having them be like uniform like that. Alright. Now I'm actually gonna stream it. So this is the current modified version. So we see more of the fairy wing attack. But you always have to be careful with the larger bullets like this, because adding too many can lead to situations where you can potentially get walled off. So it's less about uh, the frequency and more about how many bullets are in each wave, as long as they're spaced out sufficiently. If you put these too close, you could end up Emerald Megalithing the player and just getting them totally stuck depending on what appears. So you definitely don't want that. Now, is this fun and or interesting? It feels fine, I guess. You don't really get a chance to look around the screen much. You're very much just looking at where you are. So at that point, I don't know how much it actually matters that, like, what she's firing looks like fairy wings, you know? Like, Cerno wings. That's kind of what it's supposed to be. to do suppose real quick here i'm gonna put less crystals in each batch increase the speed by a bit more per crystal so they're spread out so now there's less crystals i don't want them overlapping with each other quite as much um, i can still go a bit better hold on Change to number out a little bit there. Let's try this. It's so nice not having to reboot the game. That seems about right to me. Sometimes they can like go slightly off screen. If they go like in that direction at the edge, that's probably fine though, honestly. I've really see an issue with that in particular. You're not gonna be dodging out there anyway, so it's alright. Okay. So now we get the benefits of having multiple waves without as many situations where the crystals overlap. I say as a crystal overlaps in front of me. In which case, let me change the random variance. Let's change that from 8 to 5. So they're going to go straighter downwards now by a bit. It's going to be less random variance. You can't go up to 8 degrees in the direction, just 5 now. Okay, now... We need less random speed variants. Um, which I should add as a variable too, I guess. Hold on. Angle variants. Random speed variants equals. Well, we need to factor this one in differently. Hold on. It's not 
super important that you see this coding going on. That's got just a little bit of a number tweak there, at least slightly. I don't want as many cases where like one wave overlaps with the next wave. In fact, let's make it even a bit more tame, actually. Let's see, uh, like this. I was thinking here as well. I'm going to increase the pellet weight to a little bit as well. Actually, no, that's not really going to help anything necessarily. I'll just make a thicker cloud of pellets. Um, what I would want to do to make this a bit easier instead is increase the angle between each bullet in the spiral. So the spiral is going to give a bit more space as it goes now. Might be hard to tell, but it's definitely there. See, this gives a lot more space between the closest bullets. Essentially, they'll always be a bit further apart. For the diamonds and whatnot. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's scary. Right there's kind of like a bit of a dicey situation. I did make it out. I don't know how much of a worse situation you could really be put into. And to be fair, you could always like macro dodge and point ahead better. So. It's, it's a tough balancing act. I don't know if that's good enough or not. I don't want the card to feel unfair after all. In addition, like, you could always position yourself to best deal with the oncoming pellet wave because you know the direction it's going to go in if you're paying attention. Now, I could always make it so the, the other spiral occasionally changes to... I don't know. I think that might be a good idea. I, yeah, hold on. I've got a plan. Stream alternator, where's this being used? Stream alternator, A. So we need to be as well. B. So this is really, really simple. Um, we're just going to make it so whenever we add to the spiral here, times BB, stream alternator B. And we're going to say every time um where is it? Here. Every time she does a full loop of the wings, we say self so, BB. Stream alternator B equals your sign to itself. So we'll reverse that then. Now I'm thinking that might happen too often, so I think I'm going to change the offset change again uh, to half of what it was. Actually, you know what? Let's do 8 because that'll divide evenly into 40 as well. So let's see if this works. I think it should work just fine, maybe. Okay, let's watch this. It's played, in fact. Play testing is crucial. Yep, spiral changes there. Every so often, the spiral changes directions. Which I think is kind of cool, right? I feel like... Okay, so I'm going to change the stream frequency here. And I think I want to add one more tack. Three equals function. PV, plain frequency. No, sorry. Plain amount equal to simple bullets. Simple bullets. New. Plain. Um. Can we still add more blue bullets? Uh. 
Maybe. I, I don't know. Guess we'll see. Okay. Um. So I can solve that. Why? It's still annoying having all the bullets be on, sir. Now. I can change that if I want. Honestly, it's probably fine for this this card. I think. Oh, uh, Wait, angle. Uh, five. Plus self that PV plane. Um, C plane. Just looking for reference here, and I can't find it. Plane random speed variance. Speed variance. Uh, self that random. Negative, positive. Okay. And depth should be one. We want these to be on the bottom, I think. They're going to move everything else up in layer as well. Um, this is speed. Uh, yeah, that is depth right there. Okay. And depth three. Oh, I wasn't even making this depth work properly. It should be in the bottom. It should be two, two. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So I should probably show the code. Doing a lot of stuff here. Okay. Uh, one. That's correct. Okay. We need to add these variables up here. We need speed variance one and angle as well. And amount. PV when amount equals 40. We want a lot here. Equals just two. Let's do two. We're going to divide that by 10 anyway. I can actually remember two. Okay, and angle equals zero, since that's just something that we used to iterate around. Okay, and we don't need that, those two table. Okay, now what we want to do attack three um, when we change directions. So let's see, attack three. And I'll have to do like another sound effect or something here too. To like indicate that she's changing directions and stuff. But we're already using the like ding. I actually bought a sound effects pack earlier today off Humble Bundle. I'm gonna link it in chat for anyone who's interested. It's pretty neat. I haven't actually looked over the contents yet, so I guess maybe to get with a grain of salt, but um actually get it from my DMs here. If you pay the max of 20, you get like $3,000 worth of sounds and music. I'm not going to use the music, but the sound effects I think would probably be useful. There's like magic sound effects and stuff. I'm sure there's some stuff I could use to repurpose to work for this. I might make a few of my own sound effects too, but I'm not really too concerned. Sound effects are like, you know, yeah, they're important, but I like music. I don't need them to be handcrafted per se. Because the music and the graphics are tall, the sound effects can be whatever they need to be, you know? You don't want to steal Zen's sound effects anyway. Even though he got them from a free resource and changed around a bit himself, but... I digress. Okay, um... I don't think I have any good sound effects to put there, right? Um... I'm already using charged queers there. Uh, yeah, I guess it'll, I, I could use one of these, which one is the one that I used in the patchily card, I gotta bring this up and take a look, it's, uh, I didn't name a lot of these very well, if you can't tell, the whom and whoosh and whatnot. Much of operation uses wrong file. Uh, whoosh. Okay, let's let's use that. Um. Okay. And two S effects. Two. 
push. Okay. I think theoretically, besides balancing, uh, this might be a good like place for the card to be. As you can see, I made the streams a lot less dense because I wanted to add this extra factor in whenever it eventually happens. Uh, Cerno, you seem to be drunk. You seem to not be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Hello? Hold on. I'm, uh, I'm not seeing it here. Not seeing that attack three. Now, I know you're calling it because otherwise you wouldn't be reversing your thing. Plain amount is 40. Plain blue. Depth one. That's the right. X, Y, an angle's fine. This is the... Okay. What's the problem? Oh. Duh. B, point angle. Equals up to B, point angle. It's 60 divided by self. That PB, point amount. This is something I could probably use a shortcut function for, frankly. I think it'll work now. I think she was probably making one that I just wasn't seeing, honestly, right? Most likely. There it is. It's just a pretty simple circle of blue bullets. It's pretty dense, though. I just want it to be more dense. Quite a bit more dense than that. Um. So we'll lower that. Up this by a bit more. And to be something that just it's it's there. It's there. Just a bit of an extra thing. Help like mark the change as well. But it moves really slowly. Yep, there we go. There they are. There's the bullets. There they come. So as you can see here, it only gets whole numbers, and I'm dividing them, but actually it is here. Yeah, there's only, only a few configurations it's doing there now. Hold on. I'm gonna take a look at this. It's preparing to do a 10. Could have fooled me. Hmm. And theoretically, isn't that correct, though? Weird. Oh, right. I need to pick... I guess what I should do is like 10 divided by a 100 here? Do like this? I don't actually want them to have so much speed variance that they get an extra one speed. I want them to be a mostly uniform circle with a little bit of variance there. I have a very clear vision for it. I like this kind of circle a lot. I use this a lot. Okay. I feel like I like what I've done here, actually. Even with a lot of blue, it doesn't feel like it's hard to read at all. I feel like the, the bullet depths are mostly in a good place. I feel like it's fitting that the potato bullets are up on top of everything, even if they can sometimes hide stuff a little bit. I feel like the bullets are moving at different speeds. It means that typically you'll see bullets like go on top of or below other bullets. And if you don't, maybe you need to pay more attention. I'm not sure. This is the kind of thing I always have, like, playtesters give me feedback on. But I feel like it's in a good spot. Um, I have to do difficulty balancing, I still don't have a name for it. But I feel like that's stuff that I will do tonight on my off time, or maybe even tomorrow. We'll see. I think that's a good point for the day. Um, that took four hours. And it might not look like that complex of a card, but there was a lot of thought that went into this. And I feel like this is something I'm pretty happy with. I like how this works. Oh no. Okay. Sometimes you can be put into some pretty tricky situations though. So I think maybe what I'll do real quick here. Hold on. Um. Real quick. I'm just going to... DB. Stream angle increase. So that was like the 1.2 here. I'm just going to change that real quick. And I keep changing it, so 
Let's add it here. This one's my five. This one about to. Not more space between the bullets in the stream. More minimum space here. And now, if I wanted to make it easier, I would reduce the arms of the stream as well. I just want there to be slightly less tight dodges. I would say right now it's probably somewhere between normal and hard, right? If you're really unlucky, it might hit a little bit sick, but I feel like now it won't unless you really mess up with your positioning. I feel like the card looks the best with the big bullets on top, but I guess arguably there are a couple points where I'm getting like slightly blindsided by the pellets. I have to kind of keep an eye out for him. I don't know if I want that to be part of the card's difficulty or not. So like right there, I like almost ran into that one. Not sure. Hmm. Let me try it with different depth real quick. Hold on. So let me just push these up by one. The crystal. So I'm going to put the crystal on the bottom. This is depth two. Let me try this instead. Let me try going biggest on the bottom. Because it's not like the other bullets are really going to hide them all that well. Only a little bit, right? See, the card looks a lot messier like this, so from like a spectator standpoint, I think it's worse. I think it looks a bit better with the bullets on top, just aesthetically. But it definitely is easier to play like this. It, it might be too boring like this, actually. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Things like this can be a tough call. One number can make a lot of difference, you know. I'll go with this for now, I suppose. Maybe adjust it and come up with, like, some tentative difficulties tonight and then get some feedback from actual human beings or something. It's definitely too dense for normal mode as it is now. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty fun now. I enjoy what I have here. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Lately, I've been able to save it a lot with the Don Mako I've been making, so it's, it's nice. I feel like this is a good fit for Cerno too. Has elements that she would use, got the colors, it looks just technic enough without being totally spammy. Because even though I kind of want to keep to, like, the spirit of what characters do, at the same time, Zun put some really boring Don Maku into EOSD when he was still getting things figured out. There's a lot of just random spam in that game. So I kind of want to be careful that I don't just like do that, you know? It's, it, it's difficult. He's changed his philosophies on Dom a lot over the years. Okay, I'm done. That was four and a quarter hours worth of Dom coding. Actually, I spent an entire hour showing off what I made, too. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, good session. I'm going to head off and make some 10.43 p.m. Din Din, I think. I'll try to be back someday soon. Um, maybe I'll be back with JTD tomorrow. I'm not sure. Hard to say I don't like to, but we'll see how the timing works out. And I have no idea what he's playing, but let's go raid Naro. Good night, everybody.